introducing 7 Fun Add-on. Now SLT Mobitel home broadband customers can stick to their home Wi-Fi with 7 apps all 7 days with 20 GB data for just 195 rupees. Activate this package using your My SLT app today. Fun at home for everyone. ंगलाशन <laughs> पैकेज <laughs> 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 Stay longer, use more, and get more data with the only home broadband connection that grows. SLT Mobitel Home Broadband Packages comes with data that grows bigger at no additional cost. Stay longer, use more, and get more data. Switch to SLT Mobitel today. Limited data for one whole day is the best day in the calendar. What do you say? SLT Mobitel Happy Data Day. Home broadband customers can now log on to your My SLT app and select any day under the Happy Data Day tab to enjoy 24 hours of unlimited, unlimited, unlimited data for free. Ema.lk's Mercantile Esports Championship, powered by SLT Mobitel, Sri Lanka's largest corporate esports battle. Two hundred fifty thousand rupees cash prize. Company gamers get ready to compete in twenty-five game titles.
Hello and welcome ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Mercantile Esports Championship 2023 hosted by Gamer Royal K and powered by none other than SLG Mobitel Yellow joining us live for the grand finals for Dora 2 and a shot of claiming another goal uh, in the running for the overall champions of Mercantile Esports Championship. Uh, let's have a look at who the two teams are going to be. So the rosters who are going to be taking part today is going to be Global System Solutions Wings taking on Xtel AFK. Uh, are the squads so let's see how they are going to match up against each other but uh, without any further delays let's head directly into the game to see uh, how these two teams are going to be matching up so we have Xtel uh, banning out the Primal Beast uh, the NP as well as the Tinker and OD and on the other side we have uh, the Spectre and Spirit Breaker being banned out so a very, uh, I mean NP Primal Beast very understandable even the Spectre so they missed out on a ban there I think they ran out of time. Was it? I think uh, maybe it's just about which I cannot see. But uh, anyhow, uh, they have. Uh, we are waiting on the first pick here. Not entirely sure why the timer is not going. Uh, I think it's a bit buggy here at the drafting stage, at least. Uh, so, anyhow, waiting on their next. Next band, so four bands? Was, uh, is it four? Oh yeah, it is four bands now. All right. Dyer, they do the ban. Band. Uh, they do ban off the undying, uh, and I don't see the picks. I'm assuming this is a bug. Radiant gets the ban. They do ban out the night stalker as well. So I don't know what the heroes are. Let's we'll have to wait and see how it's going to come together. But undying another strong. Uh, I mean, position 4, position 5, you can run it either way. Very strong with uh, a hero like Draw Ranger. Uh, basically with any any carry, right? The changes that have been done to his uh, second skill, Soul Rip. Because it considers Undying as a unit as well now. So in initially what happened was, uh, if you use a Soul Rip without units around, it doesn't do anything uh, in terms of damage. But since now Undying is also considered as a unit, so you have that extra unit to let out the Soul Rip. So... What I suggest is normally uh, going for a 1-4-1 one, one kind of build. Uh, you get that decay to be able to harass and like trade out and then uh, soul rip obviously insane damage uh, just overall uh, having that kill potential in the lane. And tombstone you don't really need it but you can go for it or you can like go do it like a 2-4 build without the tombstone uh, whichever way you like. Uh, but they have banned out the lich uh, on the side of Excel as well. Uh, Quite hard to say anything because the heroes are bugged out. I'm not entirely sure why. We'll have to wait and see uh, why that is. But uh, hopefully, once the game does start, we'll be able to uh, check out uh, what the heroes are. Uh, the pick stage uh, is bugged out on my PC. Uh, but yeah. So interestingly enough, the strong carries uh, in the patch are heroes like um, Slark, Spectre, Anti Mage. Troll Warlord, even Wind Ranger safe lane is actually a thing as well. And uh, you have the likes of Troll as well. Uh, who else? I think uh, yeah, even Razor, you know. Uh, I like the changes on Razor as well. Razor is decent, especially due to the fact that the carry is like probably the weakest role right now. And you want to uh, have like a decent laning stage. And Razor loves you to do that, especially with uh, the off lane is being buffed so much. Uh, the likes of Timbersaw. Timbersaw is extremely strong. You can run Viper off lane as well. Uh, there are so many strong heroes. Like the changes that have been done to the items uh, with new items like the Parasma, Kanda, uh, Solar Crest is so good. Uh, I mean, these little changes have indirectly buffed a lot of the off laners. And Timbersaw, of course, got uh, buffed on uh, his reactive armor as well. So there are there are changes that have been done. Directly and indirectly to buff the offlane and uh, position four, I guess, and a little bit of mid heroes as well, right? We saw a little bit of buffs to the mid lane heroes as well, and also uh, items like uh, you know now double damage is amplified damage, uh, and then uh, basically like you can get a the, get the amplified damage rune on uh, even an intel hero now because it will amplify your magic output rather than giving you just overall damage like physical damage or like it used to do and then items like parasma is so good uh puck is very good in the patch and then like items like shivas it's so good now because initially uh, shivas was 
primarily a uh, intel item because you get like, get like intel out of it but now you actually like get like a shit ton of armor and uh, like ca- strength heroes can be like especially like heroes like uh timber saw can build into it and there's like a lot of damage let's track did get nerfed in uh i think uh the last patch that came out like 7.35 b the uh, let's track got a little bit nerfed uh there and even the bloodstone being nerfed so uh, there have been indirect nerfs to the less track also, uh, but Bloodstone overall, I think it's uh, the biggest nerf because you don't get like the mana uh, region, not region in the sense like when you pop it, you don't get the mana back in terms of the damage that you have dealt previously it used to give. That's why less track was so strong because he depends on this item so much because he outputs a lot of skills uh, which consumes a lot of mana and having that uh, Bloodstone active to gain back uh, whatever the mana that you have spent on. Uh, uh, as a percentage of the damage that you have done uh, was really good but since it was now removed uh, less track is kind of like you know nerfed out PL is still strong in the patch as well uh, yes he did get like a couple of nerfs here and there but you know it, it's still a strong hero it's very hard to deal with uh, NP is probably the best portion for right now just a global presence like you give a team NP and Spectre your game is done and Spectre being such a uh early fighting hero now with his uh ultimate uh what is it called not haunt um what's it shadow step yeah shadow step right um yeah things like that small changes and it's on such a low cooldown you can join all the early fights you're already tanky hero you build into blade mail uh even month month afterwards uh there, there are certain things like you know these little changes that was done in 7.35 7.35 b has been uh, directly helping these type of heroes and uh, promoting a more kind of you know in your face fighting kind of meta rather than you know sit back and farm type of meta you will see a lot of uh, you know fights break out a uh, vision has been helped out as well uh, due to um, you know removing a couple of trees as well as uh, putting a new watcher uh, the two watchers are in the radiant side it's in the bottom farming area and on the dire side it's in the top farming area so little changes have been done here and uh, there on the map because vision was a big problem since the map map was made so much larger uh, so vision is like a vital of importance like of vital importance and uh, they haven't really buffed uh, any of the vision items like the number of boards that you can get or number of sentries that you can get so uh, it, it is it is nice to see you know there are, is like more watchers being added to help with the vision problem in the game uh, having said that uh, waiting on the last couple of picks and into the bands afterwards prior to seeing what the draft is going to look like here yeah uh, rough to say uh, I'm, I'm interested to honestly see what they have uh, picked up in terms of heroes and what they are going to be playing on these teams we'll have to wait and see uh by the time like the game starts we'll be able to see who is playing what uh Heroes, I mean, players-wise, I don't know a lot of these players. I think I have seen uh, 99X uh, play before, maybe 3 to 2 and then on the side of Excel, I'm pretty sure I haven't uh, seen any of them. Maybe a Blaze as so, um, But again, like, these are not, like, known players to me or, like, among, like, the top teams, uh, the, or at least the OG top teams that was there. Uh, the likes of, you know, Theka Day, Dead Sentence, uh, Victoria's Secret, Wishes and Delicious, Infinity Gaming. Like, none of these players are from any of those squads. So, a uh, bit of a question mark as to what the skill level on these uh, players are like and uh, how the matchup will be. But hopefully, it will be a good one. Hopefully, we will get to see all three games uh, All three games uh, go in the distance. Normally, Dota is, like, you win one game and then, you know, it t- 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 And we're back tends to kind of get you know uh, uh throwy kind of thing you know because a lot of sri lankan teams i think one of the biggest problems that sri lankan teams has is that their lack of knowledge on how to go high ground their high ground pushes always get messed up and then the other team comes back so you know these things happen and normally the comeback team ends up winning the game because uh, obviously they're behind because of maybe not having the proper items or them having a bit of a late later game draft so having that comeback mechanism is really good and then there are items such as i can't remember the neutral item there's a neutral item that buffs the damage when you're near towers or like near the ancient sorry uh, there's a neutral item that buffs the damage so you know base defense and it has a massive range on it as well so base defense is a lot easier. You get that extra bonus 50 damage or something like that. 
but yeah into the last uh, few bands here dire with the band let's see what they're going to take out uh, give us an idea on uh, where this uh, draft might be going Ten seconds. Not sure who has been picked, Starting so I, I I don't know who they might ban out here or what they can go for in terms of bans. I know the Beastmaster was picked up. I think Beastmaster is really strong as an offlane as well. Um, there are so many heroes. Like the patch is quite open. I feel like there is some things you can work around, and especially since it is a fighting meta. Uh, it's uh, really nice to see the games that are being played as well. It's a lot more entertaining to watch that, uh, rather than, you know, in a meta where it's like kind of farmy or like, you know, turtleish kind of meta. Uh, but yeah, even Death Prophet, I forgot about Death Prophet. It's very strong, a good fighting hero early. Uh, as soon as you have your exorcism, a good laning stage as well. Uh, ability to take creeps easily with your Crypt Swarm and then survivability with your Spirit Siphon. Uh, yeah, there are, there's like quite a bit of things that has happened which makes these heroes more uh, viable in their laning stages. Up, the day, oh, I forgot about this hero actually, Luna. So Luna gets banned out as well. So I'm assuming no carries have been picked up yet uh, on the other side of Excel. That's why they are banning out the Luna. Um, Ten seconds, just long enough to regret every choice you've made if you hurry. Five seconds, Radiant gets the ban. So the slack has been banned. So both sides uh, has not picked up a carry by the looks of it, uh, since the slack was taken out as well. It's interesting that uh, it has gone this long without the slack being picked up uh, into the last banning stage. They come and the slack still has not been picked up, which is interesting. Uh, even the Luna, for that matter, these are very strong Ten fighting heroes. Well, Luna with eight, obviously so. Eclipse and then farms really fast. Uh, with uh, your moon glaives and then the shard on Luna is also quite strong. The spinning glaives that are around dealing damage uh, and giving you the d defensive Dyer barrier. So Red King and Lifestealer gets taken out as well. So a lot of the carries. So both teams definitely has not picked up their carries waiting on the last two picks to come through. Alrighty, here we go. So we have the drafts uh, available here. Uh, it is going to be who is on which side so it's going to be gss on the dire side with uh with excel on the radiant side so it's going to be a tide hunter jekiro off no tide under phoenix off with a jekiro mid is it the jekiro mid i'm so confused who is playing mid for them it's a venge mid i'm confused so confused with the radiant draft but let's have a look at the dire draft here so we have Gyrocopter playing support, I assume, with Juggernaut carry. We have uh, the Grimstroke, very strong hero. Uh, where's the... F oh, they had a Fraser Sprite as well, okay. Let's just wait bottom, okay. Anyway, uh, Queen of Pain, obviously, gonna be mid with the Slider offlane. I really like the Dire Side draft more. It's a I lot more stronger. Your standard, inspirational, incredibly powerful and moving speech. Greg was like looks like it's not there is not going to be any uh, early game fights here by the looks of it at least Grimstroke just walking it in Need to be careful though uh, Queen of Pen Slada might get caught out here They might actually end up getting three runes there which is horrible for the Radiant side, uh, Daima is picking up three bounties, which is interesting. So this Gyro, uh, portion 5 is so strong now, it's insane, right? And uh, you contribute a lot more in terms of team fights because of the way that they changed their, uh, the Gyrocopter Ultimate, where, you know, you have three uh, uh, slow slash damage that flies out in the angle that you cast it in. It's a lot of damage. Uh, it's a lot of slow and allows your team to do a lot more with it. But yeah, it's going to be a tight Jekiro off. Mid is going to be a Phoenix lane. Uh, not something that I have uh, seen, at least for a really long time. Bottom lane, Venge Void uh, just uh, missing out on the creep equilibrium by the looks of it. 
Bit of damage being done to Grimstroke, running him down a little bit. But yeah, this wave is going to push in and Slada is going to be very happy with this. That's going to be a range creep that has been missed by the Void as well. He's getting run down. Where's the Vengeful Spirit? He's actually... The process of dewarding. Yeah, missed out on a lot. Oh, I missed a first blood here on the top lane. Uh, with the damage that went through and the homing missile as well. Setting up for the Juggernaut. Uh, Blade Fury there to get that kill. So range creeps being denied is not good. They're missing out on so many range creeps on the radiant side here. Jaron taking a little bit of damage, pops the healing ward, uh, the blood grenade as well. They're trying to kill him out. Stun flies out and the Juggernaut still survives that healing ward uh, not being broken. He gets hit by the dual breath as well though. But he's going to be okay for the time being. Uh, what is he going to do? He got a wand delivered so this is going to help him lane against that Tidehunter. The team fight from the Radiant side is uh, quite strong, you know, you have Ravage, Egg, Chrono, Macropire. There's so much that can be thrown into this Chronosphere, so it's a, it's a really good team fight that they're looking at, but they can survive the initial uh, laning stage to mid game is going to be the question. In the meantime, bottom lane, they do pick up that kill onto the Vengeful Spirit. Uh, these are kills that you don't expect that's this early on, and the Vengeful level 2 also. And top lane in the meantime, they find the Tide Hunter as well. So kills falling left, right, and center. JSS uh, off to a really good, strong early start. In the mid lane, we might have the Queen of Pain going down here, taking so much of damage, but the burn is not going to be enough. He survives on no HP at all, as the bottle picked up. So he's going to be okay for the time being. Total falling behind in terms of last hits as well there's a pull going on by three to two denying more uh creeps for this uh, safe lane and the void missing out on yet another range creep not going to be good man radiant does not like dyer's bottom tower and it shows oh bottom lane we have another kill here and the Void might be in a little bit of trouble here, gets bashed up again, he cannot break the silence, he managed to get under the cover of the tower. So another kill picked up for GSS, uh, the early game from Excel, uh, Excel, Excel, FK not really working out, homie missile flies out onto the Jakiro, Jakiro going to be forced to back off. And he is uh, going to be okay at least. Water runes being traded between the two players. Looks like Dyer's courier just bit the bucket. Yakiro managed to get the gyro. Fate needs to be careful taking so much damage. Mid lane right now is being uh, dominated by this Phoenix uh, so far. 17 last hits to 14 uh, with more denies on the Queen of Pain as well. Oh, silence on to the Void. Void is going to be in a lot of trouble here. The stun flies out as well. Is it going to be enough damage? No, it's not as they do chase him. There's another bash shot coming in and it might be a dead Void. Yes, and that's going to be a killing spree. In the meantime, they find a kill onto the Tidehunter top lane as well. This is going uh, uh, to be a horrible, horrible laning stage for the Radiant side. Worthy tribute. So the Lotus will get picked up as well. 
Amplify Rune and pinked up by the Queen of Pin, who's going to be moving towards that top lane. Dyer's middle tower has taken one hell of a beating. There's a ward overlook in this, so they know that the Queen of Pain is coming from behind and the tide is going to be backing away. Gives the Phoenix a lot more room to farm. He's not too far ahead now. Slows left, right and center. No stacks being done by either side, at least for the time being. You are simply not worthy. And lane the silence going to be good enough onto the Phoenix, the Sonic Wave uh, to follow up as well. And with the amplified damage rune, I mean, it is going. It is a uh, quite an easy kill. Top lane, Jakiro might be in trouble, the stun flies out as well. Dash is there but not going to be good enough as Juggernaut claims another kill. Now has his Omni Slash up as well. Oh mid lane, a bit of a shuffle. Basketball. Again, now things have slowed down. Here's Rune going to get picked up by the Phoenix, who have now was who the Queen of Pain has caught up to now. Here's Rune going to get popped immediately. Queen of Pain is going to be blinking out. Bit of pulls going on, so Void is quite far behind in terms of uh, last hits on the Void as well as things. Oh, top lane, uh, I mean bottom lane. The jungle, I mean the Void is going to be a little bit of trouble here. We do have the bind going to be used on the two heroes as well, and the Venge will fall here as well. One more hit, and they will pick up a double kill. In the meantime, top lane getting dove on here. They find the Jakiro they're looking for. The tide as well, and they will find it. Bit of uh, tower tanking being done by the jacket to make sure that the jug does not die to it. So 12 kills to nothing, and off to a horrible, horrible start on the side of uh, Excel here. Phoenix just uh, playing around, looking to go for that urn of shadow. Oh, that Sonic Wave utilized as well. So Queen of Pain picks up another onto the Phoenix. And Phoenix did have egg, obviously, but without backup, you don't want to use it. Top lane, there is a stun that is going to be flying out onto the. Tide Hunter with the Rocket Barrage, but the Jug is nowhere nearby. A little bit of bottle refilling going for 99x as well, helping him out in that mid lane. Uh, uh. Radiant's middle tower is about to be a pile of smoking rocks. Sun flies out onto the Jakiro Juggernaut is there, but uh, here comes the bind as well from the Grimstroke. They will find the Gyro, but the return kill is going to be there with the Omni Slash onto the Titan as well. Silenced up, he will go down. So, two quick kills uh, for Zach Room uh, on that top lane 15 to 1 now. Hope Dyer's middle tower is insured. That thing is standing on his last brick.
Being seen in the meantime, pressuring that uh, mid tower. Dyer is kicking sweet hell out of Radiant's bottom tower. Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. Okay, fine, you can look, it's kind of funny. Radiant might want to haul some ass down to their bottom tower. I see another fight here. Vengeful Spirit in a lot of trouble. The Inkswell is going to be there. The follow up is good enough, and Gyro picks up another. Hanging on by a brick. This mid tower is gonna get pressured heavily. Might actually fall here. Radius middle tower is hanging on by a brick. They will claim that mid tier one tower. Oh, the, the jump in from the queen up and onto the Jekido. Jekido is gonna die yet again. There are TPs coming in. Blood spraying everywhere. Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. Okay, fine, you can look, it's kind of funny. Arcan drone in the river. Slada has the Echo Saber picked up, really good timing for him. A Juggernaut getting ever so close to that Battle Fury. Oh, he already has it actually, sorry. Oh no. Juggernaut committing the Omni Slash picks up another onto the Jakiro. Dyer's middle tower just got denied. Look there. Stun here onto the winch. The rocket barrage to follow up as well. The stun from the Slada holding the void in place as well. He does have Chrono available, but he's going to time walk out. He does not have Chrono available, and he's going to time walk out of there. Chasing for more as Queen of Pain picks up another onto the Phoenix. They are trying to look for the slaughter. I mean, the tight hunter as well, but it keeps buffing off. Looks like Radiant's top tower is getting torn down. Probably asbestos. Things have slowed down quite a bit in terms of kills, but the top three net worth is Juggernaut, Slada, and Queen of Pain. So the Dire side obviously looking to build up on close down on the radius side. You know, take away their map control, keep pressuring them continuously. Stun onto the Slada, but where is the follow up? The void is coming through, needs to be careful though. Good God, Soulbite is going to be there on two heroes as well. The stun is going they are from the, the stun. Oh, Ravage after what person dies. There is no void. There is no follow up onto this Ravage, which is unfortunate. In the meantime, they find the kill onto the, the Grimstroke stun onto the Phoenix. He will go down the stun to follow up from the Venge and they will lose the uh, Splada as well. So it's just overextending, right? They are, they are in the lead. They can hold down, push. Uh, push power slowly. It doesn't they don't need to really rush anything? The 
up a dull face where everyone is farming. Dyer's scanning all over for enemies. I promise this will get more exciting. Slada picked up his bling dagger, looking to pick up the shard as well. Pushing forward uh, to the tier 2, top lane also Juggernaut just freely farming. There isn't anything that can really stop him, right? The TP out can only be stopped by a swap. Anti-illusions being used to push bottom lane also. Oh, we have a fight breaking out. Soulbind is going to be not be their chrono. Lovely chrono onto multiple heroes, and they will end up losing three on the the dire side. And they're looking for more onto the queen up and queen up and does have blink if he wants to use it. He's holding on to it for the time being. Fire spirits uh, damaging and keeping him alive for the time being. But the spirit vessel plus the void hitting is going to be a dead dead. A uh, queen of pain. They will find the return kill onto the phoenix, but they have already lost four. Slowed down. At what point do they go? Roshan is going to be the question next. Battle Fury Manta picked up for Juggernaut looking to pick up that Basher. Void, no more Battle Fury in uh, store for him. He's going to be building into a Maelstrom. Illusion. Couple of neutral oh items are being uh, picked up. Uh, he's going to go for the Dragon Scale, a bit of extra slow and damage overall. Started trying to ra push with the Juggernaut now rather than pushing alone. Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. Bottom tower pressured hard now. He's so far ahead of the void, it's insane. He is doubling the network that the void has. Dirty bottom tower was built to withstand uh, never mind it's gone. No real defense being put up by the Radiant side so far. They are waiting for the cooldown on the chrono, which is at least another 30 seconds off. That baby is coming down. Looks like they will head into the Roche pit. And Roshan timing it is they should do Roshan at least now. Looks like Dyer's top tower is in some trouble. Dyer's top tower is really taking a beating. Still no attempt at Roshan being made, strangely enough. Dyer's top tower is really taking a beating. Net worth 14k now on the Juggernaut double the net worth and they will go into the Roshan pit. They will get an easy free Roshan here. The healing ward goes out to keep them alive as well. And uh, Basher almost completed on the Juggernaut with this Aegis to boot as well. So Aegis gonna get picked up by the Juggernaut who has the bash being delivered to him now. A little bit of dewarding going in the meantime by the uh, Wenge. Gunapen has Orchid going for Sanj by the looks of it. 
And we have the die team moving across the forest. They might find the void here. Destructive if that's the case. Void does not have any escape as such. And the ward uh, prior to looking at the camp. If we manage to see him, maybe. Radiance Middle Tower is about to be a pile of smoking rocks. Going directly into the mid tier twos. Knight does have a dagger with the meteor hammer, so if they really want to fight, they have the chrono up as well. They have the egg, do something, but they are fighting into ages, is what they have to remember. In the meantime, we have uh, the missile follow up. Will get broken, but uh, doing a reasonable amount of damage. Oh, the stun is going to be there. They're trying to hold him. The Hitos on top of it. The ice path is going to be there as well. Still, he does not care at all. He's just. He's completely fine. In the meantime, Queen up in. Where did he blink? He blinked into the triangle. Silence onto Phoenix. Juggernaut still defending this tower. We'll try to go for a deny. In the meantime, they will find the Titan on the top lane. Oh, we might have a fight breaking out here. The call down will fall from the Gyro. In the meantime, back of the line. White tried to go on the Grimstroke. Grimstroke immediately getting out of dodge. Tommies have been left alone so far. We haven't seen a Tormentor being uh, taken by any of the teams. They will go to work on this tier 2 tower top 16,000 network lead and you see when you look at the win probability as well 95% chance towards them and they will go to work on the tormentor as well they have the healing ward to heal up afterwards and uh, he's not going to be popping it though uh, I think has the full completed abyssal being delivered to him no he's going for a blink dagger which is also nice uh I think the play here is to get a swap play here. Juggernaut's Aegis is there for another two minutes, so maybe wait it out prior to doing anything. But look at these network differences uh, between the cores on both sides. Uh, it is uh, very, very, very one sided with the Juggernaut getting some insane farm. High ground push is what they're looking for. They were smoked up. Not really going to find anything. Void caught out in the open. We'll have a rocket following him into the base. Another smoke up. This is going to get popped. One minute, 30 seconds left on that Aegis of Immortality. I see a big fight break out here. We have the Egg, Chrono, Ravage to work with. There is a DD rune. Jug spots it out. Okay, this is go time for the Dire team. This random rocket missile is pushing out the lane continuously. Oh, Juggernaut uh, gets stunned up. I uh, will Mantra dodge the magic missile that is coming through. And the bot uh, tier 3 tower is being put to work on. Oh, in the meantime, Juggernaut actually blinks forward. Uh, with that dagger and Omni Slash will get a uh, tight under. They do lock the Juggernaut down. Juggernaut has like 37 seconds left on it, so that's going to be the first life gone. Gyrocopter will end up falling. Jagger still alive there. Is a swap if uh, they want to use it. The Crone is going to be there onto the Jug on top of the Macrofire as well, but in the meantime, the Slaughter jumps in. The egg goes out as well. This is going to be a horrible fight for the Dire side. They will find one. They find the other as well. Ravage going to get popped. It's only catching up the Queen of Pain. Uh, and they are going to be trying to get out of here. Void goes forward here. The healing ward keeping the diet team alive. Void in trouble here. Can he find anything? They jump back in with the slaughter and the void paying with his life for the aggression. And even the phoenix uh, is going to get silenced up. He does not have the dive. He will get swapped out. But it's not going to be enough as he goes down as well as the Venji. They won the fight and then they lost the fight. As GSS are off to a very, very dominant game number one. Tower is about to be a pile of rocks. They do glyph it. Regenerate. 
Salvation. Tough game for them to come back from. 21,000 network lead at the 26 minute mark. Strada looking to pick up that uh, Agnum Sector or is that the BKB? Yeah, he's picking up the BKB. It's a bit of, again, a bit of a farming session happening until the next Roche is back up, I think. Uh, what time will we see Roshan is the question. Oh, well, uh, may spawn in 1 minute 4 seconds, so we'll have to wait and see how long it will take. Dyer is kicking sweet hell out of Radiant's bottom tower. Oh, Slaughter? Yeah, I thought he caught someone there. Void still does not even have his Manta, so majority of these fights are dependent on the Macropire, Phoenix Alt, you know, all the magic that is going to be coming out from the supports. Oh, stun on to the Gyrocopter. Gyrocopter will get caught out uh, walking alone. So, good gank there. I think they were smoked up for a moment. They want to try and come. A follow up here, Vengeful Spirit trying to run away, get silenced up, and the silence is going to be there onto the Void as well. The egg will fly out. Is it going to be good enough? It's going to be the question. Void will end up falling as well as another silence flies out, and they will have to back off immediately because they don't have the damage. Queen of Pain blinking forward aggressively. The silence onto the, uh, the Jakiro here will get absolutely deleted as Slara picks up a triple kill, and this is going to be a set of racks for sure. There is a buyback on the Void here. Does have Chrono? But he doesn't want to use it with like so little time to respawn. So this is going to be a free set of racks. They will get that first set of racks here. That's the Ravage, they have the Chrono, they, if they want to utilize it, they are going to be working on that mid tower now. They have backed off. Jug looking to pick up the Scardi, so not completing the Abyssal. Uh, we have the Axe being picked up by the Slada, who is uh, 30 gold short of it, so he's going to wait here and pick up that Axe as well. Are they going to smoke of deceit here? They might actually. But over one side of the game, things have slowed down though. Given the time that the uh, Radiant team needs to try and catch up, but it's uh, uh, almost impossible task at this point. Double wisdom rune, the diet team does not even need wisdom runes at this point. In this rune in the top river. No one's really interested in pushing, strangely enough. Roshan will be back in a minute. Thirty minutes into the game, we don't have an end yet. I expected the oh, they do find the queen of pain here, the ice path as well into the macro pie. The chrono going to be utilized as well, and they will find the queen of pain. Um, a bit of a, you know, I I, I mean not an overkill, but uh, uh, like good goal going towards the radiance. But I don't know what uh, this queen of pain was just doing idling alone. Five bounty runes were just picked up by the gyrocopter. Good God, the amount of gold. Yes, Veil of Discord, 4 stuff, not sure what he's going for next. And they are going to be doing, going to work on this Roshan next now.
Waiting for it to spawn. 10 seconds left on the spawn. Oh, they might just step out at the last second. 5 seconds left. They actually moved out, so unfortunate. Meantime, what are they getting? So, Lotus being picked up by uh, the Tide Hunter here. Agonim Scepter is the option for the Jakiro, which is interesting. What is the Void going for? Is he going for a BKB here? He has finally completed his Manta. In the meantime, we have the Juggernaut uh, starting work onto that Roshan. It's going to fall down quite soon. I mean, Amplify, Juggernaut damage, uh, just uh, a quick Roshan here. Now they just picked up. Let's see if they can finish up the game here. 32 minutes to the game. 33k net worth lead. Win probability at 100% for the die team. That's the first time I saw 100%. Cheese is there. Ages of Immortality is there. Slada has BKB Ags. Queen of Pain has Aghanims as well as Sanjan Kaya. San Ayan Sanj, as well as the Orchid, now looking to pick up the BKB against the heavy damage that is going to be coming out from that Radiant team. 11 to 2 on that Queen of Pain. Extremely found. Juggernaut is 10 and 1. 400 last hits, just absolutely farming the map completely dry. And they are looking to go to that top lane. I mean, mid lane T3 is quite low, but they're going to be working on this uh, top lane tower. And this is going to be an easy tower by the looks of it. No real damage being taken. Sunray are trying to delay things as much as possible. Pops the heat ward. Uh, will be going to work. They need to be careful of this uh, swap. The so Jagger needs to be playing it a little bit carefully. There is a uh, eight toss. Jagger can actually blink in here with the Omni Slash, but he's holding it for the time being. In the meantime, the stun is going to be there as. The Vengeful Spirit will get deleted, so no swap now. He still has the Omni Slash if required. In the meantime, there's a really, uh, there's an ult on to the Titan. Titan gets a Ravage on to three heroes and the Crone to follow up as well. With the Macro Power on top, is it going to be enough? The Egg gets popped as well. Slada still with the BKB active Void falling down low. The Gush is going to be there, but not good enough with a massive Sonic Wave coming out from the Queen of Pain. They have lost four. Phoenix, the last man surviving, and they will lose the entire set of racks. And the game at this point, 34 minutes into the game, GSS are looking poised to take it uh, even 2-0 at this point. The way that they have been playing and the skill difference, I think, coming out from both the sides. Uh, I feel like GSS are the much, much better team in terms of how they have played as well as their drafting as well. That's Mega Creeps and that is going to be game there is a buyback on Shakiro but uh, obviously nothing is going to happen and GG is going to get called by uh, Xtel here and that's going to be game one another stun onto the Juggernaut uh, the swap is going to be there but yeah that is it ladies and gentlemen as we have GSS taking game number one in this best of three matchup between the two teams are uh, going to be interesting to see who is going to take game number two is it going to be going into a game number three is going to be the question let's have a look with game number two so the two teams are going to be taking a short break but while we do wait for them to uh, set up and get back into game number two a massive shout out to SLT Mobile for powering the entire event uh, these guys have been absolutely amazing if you do not have an SLT Mobile broadband line or fiber line rather you need to get yourself one today it is the fastest connection in the country boasting of 200 mbps download speed as well as the lowest latency in sri lanka there is no better connection to game on or to you know watch movies download stuff whatever you are into uh, there is no better internet connection uh, internet service provider in the country than slt mobile so do check that out so with that uh, i think uh, the two teams are ready to start up game number two here excel taking on a gss let's head on into game number two see how they are going to match up against each other heading right into the draft here let's have a look at how 
is all going to come together between the two teams. And let's check out the draft. Game number two. So we have a four heroes being banned out. We had the Primal Beast, Slada, OD, as well as the Wraith King being taken out. Uh, NP has been left out by Excel and immediately grabbed by GSS. Uh, I mean, too much of a strong hero to let through, I feel like, in the first phase. Uh, in the meantime, Slada, uh, I mean, Bara, Necroforce, and Spectre being taken out. Spectre, Bara, I think, are really good bands. Bara was nerfed a little bit, but he's still a very, very strong hero, especially in this uh, fighting meta that we do see from uh, teams. It's an extremely strong hero to have on your side. Let's see how uh, Excel reacts to this, uh, you know, global uh, global presence that is going to be coming out from the side of GSS. Dyer gets the ban. So the Dupacup Undying, I really like this hero. I told how good he is as a potion 4 and even a 5 for that Dyer matter. is extremely good to have. Uh, they do go for... Wait, isn't it double pick anymore? Is it just singular picks? I'm confused. Yeah. Or was it picked and I can't see? I think it's bugged out again. So I think it, it was picked out. and I can't see, but uh, it is a ban now that is going to be coming out from the side of GSS, who has taken out Witch Doctor and they take out Phoenix as well, uh, who was played last game, Phoenix was played last game. Witch Doctor, really good ban, really good support hero, uh, just overall destructive uh, in the way that the hero operates. Uh, just does so much of damage for a support and especially with the shard has that escape slash damage. Uh, item as well in that uh, in that sense it's a very hard hero to bring down so i really like the pickup dyer's choice let's give him a second axe dyer's choice they pick up the let's axe and the snap fire so undying axe interesting build up i like the axe very strong now snap fire not entirely sure uh gives decent team fight uh, i think uh 10 seconds hmm. so as a position five right i'm assuming the snap five is five position seconds. five it's honestly not that bad and if they want to run the np co and put the snap fire off or like snap fire four with np like three or something i think np does his job regardless of whether he's offlane or not they pick up the lone druid which is absolutely insane that hero is uh very very strong uh hasn't got like the best of buffs over the times but uh he was nerfed if i'm not mistaken in 7.35 interesting pickup but uh very hard hero to deal with uh does allow you to take out the tomb easily uh, just at attack speed uh allows you to lane uh, reasonably well against the axe as well it's not too bad. Radiant's turn to pick. With the tree and so a lot of heal. A lot of sustain coming out from Excel. I'm worried for this lone red lane, right? They go with the Lunar as well. Really strong picks coming out from Excel here. Uh, gra right. Got their hands on some extremely strong heroes in the patch. They go with the Tinker on the side of GSS. Uh, honestly, this hero I do not like. This hero was nerfed. Uh, was nerfed plus the fact that, uh, I mean... Yes, it does give that global presence. But it's a bit greedy. Like, all these heroes require farm. Like, other than NP, like, all three of these heroes, like, require a lot of farm to be able to do what they do in the game. And, he, and even NP, for that matter, who inertly finds farm anyway. But, uh, it's very greedy. Like, having, having NP, yes, I understand the global strat that they're thinking of. But I, I feel like it's a bit too greedy against the lineup on the side of excellent. Especially uh, when there's a Trion to be playing Tinker, you can get caught out easily. Uh... There are so many things that go into it, so I'm, I'm not a huge fan of this Tinker pickup. The, the Dawnbreaker gets taken out, the Slug gets taken out. Uh, in the meantime, Tusk has been banned. In 
interesting because I feel like they already do have the two supports. Uh, I'm not sure why they banned up the tusk. Ten seconds. Yeah, the tusk ban doesn't really make sense. I was just like thinking about it. I really don't think that tusk ban makes sense at all. Waiting for the last ban from the Radiant side, they take out the life stealer. So again, they're assuming that GSS has not picked up their carry. But I mean, if GSS goes for another carry, or like a, I don't know, greedy pick, bit weird. So they take out the Zeus, uh, trying to protect the Tinker. That's their thinking, and they go with Ursa. So okay, not too bad in terms of the farm that is required. A very in-your-face fighting hero um, works well with the what do you call it the defense matrix of the tinker but Excel takes up the Skyrath mage so this is a bit scary for GSS right later on in the game I feel like they have the advantage but this early game it's quite rough for them in my opinion hmm It's going to be a tough game for them. Not going to be easy. So yeah, uh, we are going to be able to get into the game. And hopefully we will have a good fight between the two teams. And hopefully we get to see th game number three as well. But I honestly, looking at the drafts, I feel like we might see the game number three here. Uh, I feel like Excel, if they get a, a decent uh, early start, it's going to be absolutely uh, insane. All right, here we go. Going into the game. Standard starting Wait. items. Uh, snap. Fire is your off lane. Okay. With. Huh? I am so confused. Snapfire has a quilling blade. Your talents surpass your loveliness. So does the bear. What am I seeing? Alright, I'm so confused. Anyhow, smoke out is it utilized by the Radiant side. They are going to be looking for uh, a first blood here. Will they find it? They have the better fighting uh, fight at level 1, I feel like. Uh, I mean, with Battle Hunger, uh, Lead Seed, uh, Lucent Beam as well. I think they have the better fight and they might actually find the NP. If the NP is not standing on this high ground. He should be standing here to break the smoke, which is yeah. not. And they are going to be going in. Look at the other guys and, whew, if you do not have this... Going to be waiting for the last second to try and go in, and they are going to be going in. Battle Hunger not going to be utilized. Uh, they use the Blood Grenade. The slow is going to be there from the Skyrath as well, and they will run this down, and it is going to be Sanduli picking up first blood on the axe, going to give him uh, that uh, early couple of uh, a bit of gold and farm. Uh, but runes will be traded. Two two. I'm still confused by this Quillen Blade. It's just annoying me looking at it. Are they planning on doing dual farming that? Like, huh? So, so very confusing. Mid lane is going to be a bit horrid for the Tinker, to be honest. These are going to be utilized uh, to try and deny, but not going to work as Kyrath will take that last hit with his concussive shot. So he's not farming, he's just cutting out the trees. Ah, okay, okay, okay. Now I understood ah, the Quelling Blade because of the tree and protector. At, I mean, that's a, 
it's a bit of an investment I feel like to be fair this is not the first time I saw this I was playing Tibbo saw the other day and there was no trees for me to uh, grapple on to uh, timber chain because they had cut down all the trees in the laning stage like which is insane right now Tinker is leading in terms of last hits at least so having an okay time for the time being Skyrath is missing out on a bit of last hits here. Should not have missed out on that range creep as well. So he's at least he didn't get denied. So he gets the full EXP out of it. Uh, but uh, yeah, missing out on quite a few last hits there. The NP being played four here. I mean five. Nature's profit. Us, uh, see, I really don't like. Axe is not picking up battle hunger, it's such a strong skill to have. Honestly, it does not make sense to me. But yeah. Oh, we have a TP. Going to be TP mid onto the Skyrath Mage. The, the root is going to be there as well, and they will pick up first blood. On the side of GSS. Uh, actually, not first blood, but they will pick up a kill in the meantime. Bottom lane. The Luna is getting run down. The cookie misses the mark. Bit of a deforestation happening. So traps up Sanduli who is gonna cut through immediately. Meantime laser being traded on to Skyrath gets the bottle charge up, manages to pick up the water rune. But missing out on quite a few last hits. Yax off to a really good start, uh, sitting at the highest uh, last hit, uh, just uh, getting first blood as well, so he's ha definitely having a decent game. It's like he heard me and he picked up, oh, GP being faked here by the NP. But they might try to go on this, needs to be careful though because the NP is coming through. And they don't have the mana to follow up and Skyrath Mage will pay for it again with his life. A good rotation by the NP twice now. So that's the mid lane being completely demolished on the side of uh, Excel there as GSS takes a very early lead. Meanwhile, call on to the Ursa to get a bit of chip damage. Lead seed uh, as well as what do you call it? Grip or stun on to the tree and protector. What do you call it? Nature's grasp. Okay. Oh. Accent trouble. Meanwhile, Ursa actually ends up going down with the Undying chasing him under tower. He's going to be okay. Salve going to get popped by the Ursa and gets the call out as well. They will find the kill on to. He needs to diagro. He needs to diagro. Okay. Finally, does diagro. Okay. They will pick up uh, very two very important kills because the mid lane has been going so horrible. It was very important that they pick this up. So Undying has now got a, a level in Soul Rip. In the meantime, uh, the courier of uh, Luna has been taken out. So he's going to be very sad. Uh, I'm not entirely sure what was inside the courier there. Or did he already get the items? Maybe he already got the items. Mid lane, Tinker very close to level 6. Top getting close to his uh, vanguard here. Probably looking to pick up Facebooks before that. We have a trap onto the axe. So he's just going to cut through. Tomb is going to be up in 10 seconds. So they might try to have a go again if they really want to two levels in fury so in the meantime bottom lane they are trying to go on to the trail protector train protector protect, falling down low nature scraps going to get used the bear taking a lot of damage from the tower as well as luna going to be okay they do have the tomb 
A pen ready. Slada gets, uh, I mean, sorry, Axe gets healed up immediately with the this thing. They are trying to chase after Fate here. NP falling down low. They pop the uh, tomb as well. The call is going to be good enough, and the Axe picks up another kill. So that's three kills for Axe. The Tinker has TP through, the rockets fly out, is it going to be enough? Yes it is, as Tinker picks up a kill and the Undying is forced to back off. He's going to get, give a little bit of breathing room at least for the Skyrath Mage, but uh, again, trading of kills here and there, still anyone's game so far. Uh, the Ursa has managed to catch up in terms of last hits, uh, the Ursa and the Tinker both sitting at the highest number of last hits. In the meantime, we have a TP coming into the bottom lane, the, the trap onto Luna misses the mark. Unfortunate, Nature's, Nature's Grasp also going to keep them at bay, so... A bit of misplay and they will miss out on a kill because of it because Luna does not uh, Luna does have a Quillen Blade as well, okay. All over the place, everyone's running Quillen Blade. It's either because of the Treant, uh, Protector or the Nature's Prophet. So decent bit of farming going the dire side but uh, Axe is holding on in terms of the kills that he has gotten sitting at the highest net worth. Up a vanguard with boots as well. NP has gone for threads interestingly enough. He's going to try and sneak the room but uh, has it been taken? Yeah it has already been taken yeah. All oh, the wisdom runes has been taken so. NP just having a look see there. Asa needs to be careful. He cannot afford to get called here. A three levels in battle hunger. This is what I like to say. Actually, two levels is more than enough, but he has gone for three. They're looking to go for a kill here. Undai needs to be careful. He pops the tomb as well. He has the soul rip available if he wants to use it. The tr uh, yeah, they miss out on the uh sorry. The shred as well. They are trying to chase after the Asa pops the ultimate, trying to run away. Is there going to be enough? The level 3 battle hunger is going to be good enough. For they have a Kalim Blade available as well. Another one charge popped. Saka room gets the call down. And now the Invis rune Tinker walks in. They will find the kill on to the Undying. But the return kill on to the Snapfire is going to be there. Uh, the, the NP with another Sprout uh, holding him down. Tinker now getting run down. Sandhuli falling down low. But there is more heroes coming into the play. We have the Bear joining the fight as well. But... Yeah, Lone Raid is going to be backing off, but overall, I think uh, it was a win for the side of uh, Excel here. Very core kills, a uh, position four on top of it as well. They're going to be very happy with it. They only lost the Undying for it. You know, TP on here. Tinker jumping in, has the Blink Dagger up and ready. Sandhuli going to be in a bit of trouble, but the laser is going to be good enough as Tinker picks up another 99x on a killing spree. On the top lane, uh, staying low and paying the price and Tinker revealing his blink dagger. Urza has switched to the bottom lane, his top lane was not going well enough, so he has swapped out lanes. Radiance middle tower is hanging on by a brick. Meanwhile, they are preparing for another kill on to bottom lane. There was a was no ward scouting this, so they're going to be a little bit careful here. So Bear and us are both on the bottom lane now. Interesting. Maybe they're trying to five man pressure this tower. Ursa wants to fight here. Cookie going to be used as well. Uh, but the, the trend protector is going to be too far. Now the Skyrath may join the fight as well. They are trying to get these kills here. They will find the Snapfire early in the meantime. They will lose the Luna in return. Trian needs to be careful. He does not have the mana for the ult. He's going to be weaving through the trees and getting out. The slow is going to be there. He's still weaving through the trees. But the Sprout is going to be there. They will find that 300 bucks on the bear at least. He spawns it again. Uh, the Trim Protector in a lot of trouble will end up falling. Undyne TP is into the fight. He had the tomb up and ready. Pops it and now going to work on Absolute Resort. They need to take out the tomb and the Undying will end up falling. In the meantime, there is another Sprout being utilized trying to find the Skyrath Mage. But a really good engagement coming out from GSS to catch out multiple kills. Top 
tower is really taking a beating. Radiant's sturdy bottom tower was built to withstand, uh, never mind, it's gone. Hope Dyer's middle tower is insured. That thing is standing on its last brick. The seeds are still trying to push through Tinker, but uh, being very careful uh, defending the lanes here with that Blink Dagger Soul Ring. Uh, just farming up as many camps as possible, moving around. Meantime, we have NP who is looking to pick up a Solar Crest. Very good item. Uh, okay, now that's the ward reveal. They use the blood grenade as well. He's trying to TP out, but the call is going to be there. I don't know what NP was thinking. He will end up going down. Another Culling Blade and that axe getting two charges of his Culling Blade. You what does it give now? Armor? Armor bonus? Yeah, armor per kill, right? Yeah, okay. Gold and sweet. Skylar Mage looking to pick up that Rod of Atos to get a guaranteed kill. He's farming uh, quietly towards his, uh, quite a bit away from it at least for the time being. He is behind the NP in terms of net worth as well, so it's going to take some time. Top tower, I'd put on a hard hat. That baby is coming down. Dyer's top tower is really taking a beating. Meantime, we have a disconnect from the Ursa. So, yeah, we have the player reconnecting back up and go is the call. So, top tier 1 tower at least will end up falling in here. In the vicinity of Dyer's top tower, i put on a hard hat. That baby is coming down. Dyer's top tower... Back with the game and the top tier 1 tower ends up falling. You can tell Dyer's middle tower is in trouble from the way it's being... Ursa uh, looking to pick up a battle fury, so he's looking to take this late. I don't think that's the item choice. Let's see what the bear has. There's Diffusal Blade picked up. He had it the last fight as well. Is it Phylactery he's building, right? Am I, or am I mistaken? Yeah, it is Phylactery he's going for. Tinker is going for a Phylactery. Very good item. Good damage, good burst. Things are looking dire for dire I really like it just because of the slow, continuous slow because every rearm uh, refreshes the phylactery as well. It's extremely good item to have. And obviously with Kanda it gets even better. So Wakanda. The MP comes in, mid traps up the... Skyrath mage, Skyrath mage pops the shield rune, turns around, uses the ultimate, and that's the dead NP. Wasn't expecting that. Multiple TP is coming in mid. They want to try and fight this. Uh, Tinker is going to be a little bit annoying here. Uh, Luna is going to get stunned up. The ult is going to be utilized by good god. The damage coming out. Axe in the meantime comes in, jumps in onto the Tinker. Tinker falling down low. Uses the defense metric, but it is not going to be enough. Now Axe is going to get uh, melted down a little bit, that uh, damage coming out from the bear, quite significant, gets the root back up and the Ursa jumps in onto the Undying, Undying falling down low, uh, Ursa, I mean sorry, the Axe in the meantime gets run down, they lose the Undying as well, yes they got the kill onto the Tinker but they end up losing 4 in the fight. So the greed seems to be working out for them. Hold on to your taters. He has the Lotus picked up, going in for a four star, very important against the Rod of Atos that is going to be coming out from the Skyrat Mage, who has completed it finally, so allows him to get a kill. Is that... Oh, meanwhile, bottom lane, the call on to 3 2, two on that Snapfire. Bang, he goes down, and that's another Kalim Blade charge for the Axe. Building up on that armor, already up to 30 odd armor. Actually, no, sorry. Already up to 12 armor without any armor items, uh, which is quite good. This is excluding the armor that you get from the call.
Looking dire for the Radiant team. <laughs> Pun intended. Uh, but yeah, Tinker quite uh, farm now. Has the Phylactra picked up. Very far ahead of the Skyrath Mage. Oh, a call on to 3 to 2 again. But uh, where is the follow up is going to be the question. Uh, the ultimate is going to get utilized by the Snapfire. Not really doing too much damage. Might find the tree and protect. Uh, he managed to get out. Meantime, Tinker though is still on the hunt. They use the smoke of deceit now. Was it spotted out? I don't think it was spotted out. Things are looking dire for Dyer's bottom top. Wow, that was unintentional. Forget I said that. Their bottom tower is in trouble. Though. Looks like I'm not the one who makes the dire pun here, with the bottom <laughs> bottom dire tower being under attack by creeps. In-game announcer also makes the same jokes. I'm not too bad. That means you know. Interesting enough, they haven't tried uh, gone for a Roshan attempt uh, with an Ursa in the team as well as a Lone Druid, so no Roshan attempts have been made uh, by this Dire team, which is a bit questionable to be fair. Meanwhile, they do catch out the NP. NP will fall. They will take down the tomb fast, but they will end up losing the lone druid as well. Shinka trying to TP into the fight. That's a good idea to get out, but a good engagement coming out from the side of Excel there. A couple of quick kills and the Ursa. Sorry, the Axe wasn't able to get the Halim Blade off, which is sad. So, no extra armor for him at least for now. Looking to pick up the blade mail, which she still does not have. There's a region rune in the river, uh, which the Tinker might pick up. You know, they do pick up that uh, bottom tier one tower. So tower wise, at least, uh, it's, 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 it's quite even. Uh, the mid tier one is the only problem that they need to take. Tinker is tipping in, try and defend. We'll cancel it for the time being. And the top tower. Top tower is in a little bit of trouble. Creeps. Gonna get healed up by the Trent. Trent is gonna be teeping out. Oh, they try to jump in onto the snapfire here. The call is gonna be the axe in a lot of trouble. Ursa in the meantime jumps into the back line. But where is the damage? They end up losing the axe. Is there more that they can do? Luna is gonna be running away. There is no chase here. But NP is gonna be coming in. Will trap up. Uh, the undying. Undying will get, get gone on. And they will end up losing too. And everyone just uh, hightails out of the immediate smoke of deceit being utilized uh, by the dire team here. Not sure what the plan is. They are going to go be going into Roche, right? We're doing Roche. Roche is toppling. They are going to wait here. It's coming down in five seconds. So, Dyer we'll wait for it. Think in the meantime, looking to pick up the Dagger Scepter. Luna has... I haven't shown Luna in some time. Uh, looking to pick up the Manta style. Uh, did he... What does he have? He's still, he has Dragon Lance, Manta, MOM. Very good. He's quite far. The highest net worth right now has been uh, farming quite fast. But this Aegis is going to be gone by the time that they do react to this. Dire 
Empire's middle tower has taken one hell of a beating. Don't look Bottom out, tier 2 bottom tower is under trouble here. Excel is in a little bit of trouble. They, 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 a lot of this depends on how well how well of a good call that Axe can get off during the fight. Oh, Trian gets a good ultimate. They are trying to start this fight. They are going to be coming in in the meantime. NP does manage to get the four stuff out. The call is going to be on two heroes, but is it going to be enough? The mechanism going to be used. Skylar Mage is in a little bit of trouble trying to get out. In the meantime, the Luna with the ultimate will find the Snapfire kill. Looking to get the bear as well. Absolutely, it was so tanky. And now, the Ursa will finally fall here. They will look uh, into the Lone Druid as well. They find the Lone Druid. They are now looking into getting this NP. NP gets rooted up. Uh, looking for the Tinker as well. Not going to find it. Ursa under control here. Jumps back in. But he is going to be in a world of hurt as his Luna is just laying into them. Three heroes dead. And this is with Aegis. And they are going to try and t chase this NP down. The call is going to be good enough. The call. Oh, misses. So he does not get the charge. At least on Sandali. But it is going to be three heroes dead. And that was with Aegis on the side of... Uh, GSS, they're not going to be happy with that engagement. There is a deep ward which has not been scouted out. And here. Normally you need to, uh, like, it's, it's a devote spot that you're looking for when you're taking a fight, but uh, Radiant team has not devoted it, interestingly enough. A bit of uh, signs of life coming out from the side of Excel, so they're still in it. But later the game goes, it's uh, going to be what is uh, scary. Uh, Spread Bear on CD, at least for the time being. Luna is just getting ridiculously fat right now. He's looking to pick up a Skadi as well. I don't know if the Skadi is the item. Just picked up his Hurricane Pike. Um, maybe. I, I, I mean, I'm not. I'm not a fan of the uh, the Skadi here. I think uh, you go more damage here, like a Daedalus. But I understand the thinking for more stats to survive the burst, uh, but uh, Tinker is the only burst that they're looking at. And the, you know, region negation is not that great. I think Daedalus certainly could have been a lot better. In the meantime, they will find 3 to 2. The call is going to be there. And bang, he goes down. And suddenly picks up another uh, Culling Blade charge. Just uh, playing out of position a little bit. And now with this, they are going to try and pressure this. They will find the Tormentor, which uh, the shard will go to uh, the Snapfire, who just died. But the bottom lane push is going to be happening here. Uh, Triant is doing a lot of work scouting things out. I think he was spotted. Maybe. Oh, so close. There's a blinked out. They are going to try and work on this tier 2 tower here. Try and take advantage, but now everyone's back up. The TPs are going to be coming in. How is this fight going to break out is going to be the question. They're going to be backing off there. Don't want to take this fight, but they will scout. Uh, I think they got... Things going all over the place, but they're going to be backing off. Also, okay. Blink Dagger Bash looking to pick up that uh, BKB now. Hope Dyer's middle tower is insured. Very much needed against uh, heroes like the Skyrath as well as even the Luna for that matter. Like, there's so much of magic damage. And the mid tower will get denied, so finally the mid tier 1 tower falls. Uh, Ursup manages to pick up the shard, so... Not waiting to get it off the torment, uh, picking it up early. It's a good shard, mind you. Gives you enrage for 1.5 seconds every time you use uh, Urchok. Right, is that? Yeah. It's quite good, so... With the smoke up, is it being utilized? Uh, they are on the hunt for someone. Uh, counter smoke by the Radiant team as well. I mean, they smoked into the area that they have wards. They know that they are not here, right? So, I'm not a fan of that smoke into the dire bottom side because, like, they should have gone top. They already had 
vision but in the meantime they are picking out the ursa here and the smoked up squad is going to be wrapping and they are looking for a fight here ursa will get spotted out a good call by the axe and they will try and burst him down and they will get the burst down onto the ursa good call by the axe and now they are trying to turn this around snapfire with the molotovs being used but not going to be good enough and now with the tomb at work they need to be careful tinker joins the fight but it is going to be absolute zero in the absolute world of pain here and they will find the kill onto the lone druid and they will get the call on to fate as well fate is getting going to get run down in the meantime and think are going to get caught by the luna plus triant as well they'll end up losing four snap five is going to be the only man to get out and that was a horrendous fight for the dire team gss like i said that smoke was a bit weird right because i mean they have vision on the bottom side so why smoke into the area that you know there isn't anyone right you smoke into the you smoke and go this like you go into like their jungle into the mid lane maybe the triangle but not bottom because bottom you already know that there is no one so honestly that smoke didn't make sense to me and a smoke wasted opportunity again for the other side they will claim a tier 2 tower as well and this is probably the first time that they are going to be in the lead in this game probability wise in favor of this radiant side by 86% Chinka Flactriags picked up by looking to pick up an E Blade, very important uh, to try and deal with this Luna. Uh, Luna is now going to be picking up a BKB as well. So, has foregone the Scard, he stopped building it and he's going for a BKB early. Oh! Good call on to the lone druid yet again falling down low. Uh, it gets used up, but is it going to be enough? The mystic fly is going to be there as well. Axe does not get the culling blade, and then two quick kills go in favor of Xtel and now ramping things up, uh, fighting hard again. This Triant protector doing so much of work in scouting things out, and even that ward, like you know, catching people off guard. It's a dagger as well for initiation. So with this, they are trying to go high ground here. At least do chip damage. There is no buyback on the die side. But they don't know this, right? They have around 8 seconds to deal with this. And they are going to be forcing the issue here. Yeah, Manta MOM is going to get popped. They are going to be glyphing this. Uh, return glyph is going to be utilized by the Radiant team. And they are going to be working on this. Tinker is going to be tipping in. One illusion being sent out. Uh, Tinker trying to TP uh, uh, blink away by uh, lasering it. But that's going to be the tier 3 fall in the call. Misses by milliseconds. They will lose that tier 3 tower. How are they going to defend? This is going to be the question. Luna just laying into these racks now. So much of damage being thrown out by the squad. And they cannot deal with this trend because they cannot play on this side of the map. Uh, because the trend is going to get catch out anyone who walks in. Uh, but they will end up losing racks in the meantime. They try to find one hero. The use is going to be there. Ursa comes in uh, onto the axe. Axe is going to be in a world of hurt here. Gets the call off, but it's not going to be enough. And now Luna in a bit of trouble. Tomb is going to get popped. And they are going to be high tearing themselves out of their BKB. Going to get popped to get out. But damage has been done. Melee backs though. Luna, my man, you should have taken it without joining the fight. But it is what it is as they do claim at least the range racks. And the network graph swings again. But uh, still, uh, tower advantage at least. Win probability dipping a little bit. Uh, it's still at 87% though. Uh, Luna still looking to pick up that uh, scard here. Harpoon 
uh, looking to pick up an AC. Uh, trying to get a nullifier. Who is this for? Okay, the Skyrath Mage who has an E-Blade. Meantime, Axe, oh, jumps in, uh, manages to catch the Ursa, though Ursa uh, does have the enrage for 1.5 seconds, he has the battle hunger on him, going to turn around, uh, oh, he gets four stuffed in, needs to be careful, and now they find the NP as well, Tinker joining into the fight, Undying in a little bit of trouble here, gets the heal off, but he's going to get dead, the Glimmer care popped though, and deleted is going to be the lone druid, and they will find the NP as well, a good ult coming out from the tree, looking for the Tinker, Tinker not going to get found though, he's on the high ground, and Ursa left alone, Ursa pops the BKB, but what can he do? Trying to work on the Luna, but he's just too tanky here. Uh, Ursa gets called back up. Luna trying to run away. He does not have the force by Tinker still joins the fight. Axe in a little bit of trouble in the meantime. Skyrath Mage onto the Tinker. Tinker teeping out. There is no Lotus and he will get out. And they will end up losing the snap fight. So they end up losing the Luna, but they will find three. And Ursa still fighting strong. Uh, Tinker is going to be coming back in. So they need to be careful and getting out. Tinker still on the hunt here. Uh, blinking forward. Needs to be careful though, Axe. Running for his dear life, the rockets are going to be there on to uh, Sanduli, who is going to be tipping out. And they will end up getting out with three. Bit of a weird fight, swinging in favor of uh, the Dire team still, but they ended up losing the Luna, which is a massive kill. Highest farmed hero, and I think it was Ursa who picked up that kill. This is going to help him get so uh, ever so close to that uh, nullifier. MP doesn't have the shard, interesting enough. Uh, I would have liked the shard on him. And maybe an axe next. Uh, he has picked up a pipe. Good item for the team. I really need it. So all the utility items are being gone for by the NP. As expected, there's a DD rune. Oh, sorry. Amplified damage rune. Luna has completed the Skadi, now looking to go for a butterfly, which is actually really good because uh, this boy is going to get forced to go MKB next. Uh, but uh, they will claim a Roshan by the looks of it, uh, Aegis and Cheese available. But they really do need the Ursa, uh, uh, they are not doing enough damage. Uh, as soon as the Ursa come, uh, you know, things change. Looking for a 4 stuff instead of the AC, I guess. A Treant is on the hunt. Oh, that's going to be Aegis claimed as well as the Cheese on the Ursa. The two Aegis is claimed by this uh, Dire team on GSS. Can they finish up the game is going to be the question. Luna is just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. What does the Axe have? Axe has picked up the BKB Crimson Guard. Oh, has a greater healing Lotus as well. Uh, obviously, it's going to be really good. He picks up. Hmm, interesting item. Psychic Headband. I guess it's good against the Ursa to push him a bit away. I would really like to see a Shiva's on this axe. Dyer's top tower is really taking a beat. Regeneration. But Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. It's kind of funny. Me tipping into the top lane, Luna just uh, farming around, pushing down that mid tower, keeping them at bay, forcing Tinker TP back and deal with this every time. Tinker has picked up the Shiva's guard, really good item to have. And you can tell Dyer's middle tower is in trouble from the way it's being destroyed. Oh, they catch out the snapfire here. The train protector again finding a hero. The cookie is going to be there. Where is the follow up though? Tinker needs to be careful. Shiva's got popped. 
But there is no vision and now gets a lovely three man out. The follow up is going to be there. Call on to two hero stinker in trouble. And he might actually go down here. The curling blade into him. That stinker dead. They will find the snap fire as well. Now absolute zeros. Bear is going to be in a world of hurt here. They're looking for the NP as well. NP getting run down by the undying. Uh, he's not going to be able to get out of here. Get silenced up. And the... Yes, the kill is going to be good enough. So they end up losing three in that fight. A massive find by the Shrian Predator yet again. This man, uh, uh, Elimac, Elimac making plays across the board for his team. And he's so close to his Agonim Scepter as well. Going to be really annoying. And he's going to be signaling signs for this melee barrack bottom. They couldn't get it the last time, but there are two buybacks. But without the Tinker having buyback, there's no point trying to defend this. They will end up giving away bottom racks here. And they use the glyph though. Trying to delay things uh, till the Tinker comes, but uh, yeah, it's just gone. Uh, trying to uh, do some little bit of damage on tier 4s as well with these illusions. They're going to be backing off and it's not a good god the damage. Yikes, is a lot of damage. Luna close to his... Uh, Butterfly here as well, uh, probably taking out the Buto. He has the butterfly. What is he taking out though? Ask. Yeah, it is okay. I think you fill this up with a Satanic and your Gucci. What's the tier 4 item? A solid tier 4 item as well, Mindbreaker. Uh, I Axe still hasn't got it. Uh, we have Eye of the Wiser on Sky, which is okay. We have Psychic Headband on Triant as well. What does the Undying have? Still using a faded brooch. Meanwhile, smoked up. Uh, they're looking for a fight here. Will they find it? Is going to be the question. Luna in the middle. Needs to be careful. There is a call though. Onto the NP. Luna gets jumped on. Is it going to be enough? He manages to force spike away. Snap fire using the ultimate. But it's not doing enough damage. NP getting run down by the axe. And now axe needs to be careful. His BKB has round. He pops the actually pops the BKB now. He has the healing lotus. He manages to pop it now. Staying alive. In the meantime, they're still fighting away. Ursa in a world of hurt here. Luna fighting up against the Ursa. Ursa. The Aegis does get popped. They're looking for more. Lone Druid now in trouble the call onto the tinker can they find the kill onto the tinker the sun is going to be there snap fire will end up falling here and the lone druid is going to get massacred absolutely massacred by the luna and uh, and the buyback from 322 is not going to be good enough as the call going to be coming in from suddenly that's going to be another calling blade into the face tinker needs to be careful shaping in here and he deep is oh blinks out right on time here has a gem picked up as well he's trying to defend against the five but this might be all over here this is going to be a very very difficult hold for the tinker alone needs to be careful of the axe jump in as well he's just spamming away trying to defend how much can he do as the Luna just lays into this, as soon as this tier 3 goes, these racks are gone. These racks are absolutely gone and even the tier pose might be gone here. And that might just be game, ladies and gentlemen. Tinker coming in from the side, trying to do as much damage as possible. But the stun is going to be there from the Trian. And the Tinker gets called up. He's dead. 69 seconds, no buyback. Uh, the NP comes in as well and the NP will get run down by this axe. And he will end up falling here as well. Here's the Quillin Blade. Axe, why aren't you using the Quillin Blade? He's not using the Quillin Blade. But it is going to be the NP dying as well. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, we have a game three here as Xtel close out game number two. What a play coming from Elimac here. Elimac and Sandali, the MVPs of I excel for this game number two. What a performance. What a performance. We have a game number three uh, in this best of three grand finals between these two teams. What a tournament. What a grand finals for Dota 2 here. Uh, a lovely game to watch as well. So many action-packed fights happening, but in the end, it was Excel uh, excelling uh, at this game number two. I think it was Elimac and Sandoli just uh, outperforming everyone. So, uh, Elimac finding so many key pickups, so many key kills across the board. It was just absolutely insane. Uh, so while we do wait for uh, the third game and the players to get ready, a massive, massive shout out to SLG Mobitel for powering the entire event number one connection in the country in terms of internet connectivity the fastest download speeds as well as the lowest latency in sri lanka as well if you if you do not have an slg mobile fiber line at this point what exactly are you doing is going to be the question and of course they do have some gamer centric data bundles available if you want to check it out make sure you check that out as well it starts as low as 
500 rupees uh, with that we are waiting for the teams to connect hopefully they will connect shortly into game number three all right all right i think we are ready uh, for game number three here we have the players connecting into the game uh, let's head on into game number three of this grand finals between excel uh excel uh, versus gss to see who ends up taking the title for dota 2 this has been taken uh, on so many occasions by gss i think for the last three years running can they repeat it for this year as well is going to be the question. Extel are uh, giving a really good game in game number two there. Can they continue that performance in game number three? All right, Dyer gets the band. Ten seconds. Five seconds. All right, Dyer's turn. Radiance up. So starting things up, we have the Primal Beast Slada, Necro and Odi being banged out. We have the Undying Bara and Shri and Prater being banned out. Why is there no fourth ban? Weird. Ten but seconds. the Spectre is the first pick from GSS. Five seconds. Am I missing something here? One band, two band, three bands. One band, two band, three bands, four bands. Oh, wait. The drafting pattern has changed so much. Oh, holy. I'm completely sorry, guys. No wonder I was getting confused. Why am I not? Oh, when did this happen? How long was I out of competitive Dota? I, know, I knew there were four bands now at the start. But I didn't know the order of it changed in a way that... One team gets like four and the other team gets three. Need to check the priority on that. But anyhow, Axis, the return pick coming out from Excel. It worked out really well for them in the first game. They pick it up. Uh, GSS Wings going for that global strat again. They picked up the Spectre. Are they going for an NP again? NP is out in the open uh, for GSS if they want to pick it up. Five seconds. They banned out the Phoenix. Uh, which GSS did have a little bit of trouble during the laning stage early on. It was just annoying, I think, more than anything else. Radiance up, the ban of the Skyrath Mage, okay. So, uh, respect uh, bans coming out, the Undying, the Treant, the uh, Skyrath Mage, all three heroes from the previous game. Leaves a lot of options open for Excel if they want to go uh, for uh, different heroes here. They have the likes of uh, NP if they want to pick it up as well. Uh, who else do they have? Ten seconds left. Uh, they have Underlord, Timbersaw, I mean, can't play Timbersaw, sorry, and Underlord, it's already Axe. Uh, but in terms of supports and carries, they have a lot more options available. They have the Void available, they have the Puck available. Uh, who deals, uh, they have the PA available to deal with the spec with shards, the Fan of Knives, a quite good break. HP based damage as well. Second pick is going to be the Tusk. So they pick up the Tusk. Uh, good combination lane. Uh, tusk acts uh, very destructive. Uh, eye shards, uh, the tag team, the snowball in with the call. Uh, all these skills work really well together. So axe, uh, I like the axe task combination. Spec is not going to be able to get out that easily. The only advantage he has is that destructive dagger. He can, I think, walk out of eye shards if I'm not mistaken. Not entirely sure. Not if he's taking damage, right? No, I don't know. Can he can, I think, get out of ice shards. I'll confirm that later. Let's see. I mean, during the game, you, you'll be able to see. But the NP has been banned out, so Excel does not want any shenanigans, global shenanigans uh, with the Spectre. It's a really good ban because if you're not picking it up, you cannot afford to give GSS Spectre an NP. That's just too much of global presence for them to deal with. Dyer's turn to pick. I love this pick, uh, such a strong hero. Um, 
uh, interestingly enough that the cm has been let through like by both the teams in bo uh, both the games that we saw and even in this game the cm has like gone untouched he's probably one of the best supports right now Turn the patch even one. the ogre for that oh, matter has been let through no. uh, these heroes had not been like touched by both these Five teams seconds. so interesting Double pick for the side. What are they going to be picking up is going to be the question here. They pick up the Vengeful Spirit. Again, a very, very strong hero in the patch. Uh, I like it. So, JSS is going to be playing Dire again. They haven't swapped sides. And Excel is going to be on the Radiant side. We're 10 seconds out. Plenty of time to tell an announcer you love them if that's what's in your heart. Let's see about the double Five pick seconds. that is going to be coming out from the side of Excel. How do they reply to this Venge pitch? So white becomes a bit weird now because of the Venge. You have the swap uh, swap save from uh, it. Uh, so they pick up the Grimstroke. Oh, I love this hero. So these two supports right here, like the Lich Grimstroke, Vengeful Spirit, uh, Tusk very strong in the patch. Tusk maybe not as much, but these three heroes are extremely strong in the patch. I love the Grimstroke pickup, uh, Grimstroke pickup as well as the Venge and the Lich. These are all very good heroes. Uh, good drafting uh, in that sense, like picking up these strong heroes. They go for the ogre as well. So wait a minute, is this an ogre mid? Oh, that would be fun. Is it a Tusk mid? Either way, we're in for a you know baller of a game here. 10 seconds, just long enough to regret every choice you've made if you hurry. Five seconds. Dyer gets the ban. They pick up the... Ooh. Radiant gets the ban. Ooh. There you go. There you go with the global presence. Ten seconds. Radiance up. Banning time. Ten seconds. Just long enough to regret every choice you've made if you hurry. Five seconds. Four, hmm. three, Last two bans, so looking to ban out carries at this point, so they take out the Tinker. Uh, I mean, looking to ban out of mid, so they take out the Tinker from last game. It was a really good Tinker to be fair, but you know, it's a nerfed hero, plus uh, it was just uh, too much of counters. I feel like the tree and character itself just gives them so much catch against that Tinker. Cannot really hide in the trees. Ten seconds left. Um, so, Eight. yeah, and this time around they don't have the tree, and so Five banning seconds. out the Tinker, they have nothing against the Tinker to be fair. Uh, so, I mean, they have catched like the Tusk shards to like find him, but yeah. Take out the Wraith King, very strong. A uh, good push uh, with the skeletons and really annoying with Aghanims to deal with. So they take it out. It's a very strong hero in the patch. Ten seconds. To be fair, he was strong in the previous patch as well. So, five seconds. A bit of reserve time left, a little bit more reserve time left than the side of uh, Excel here to pick up. So they're thinking about this. Uh, their mid hero, who they want, uh, what are the options? They still have Puck. I feel like Puck is still very strong. Uh, they don't have the best of catchers for Puck. Uh, I mean, Grimstroke, Silence, Call, that's about it, right? Like, what, what else are you looking in terms of uh, catch on the Puck? I feel like Puck is really strong. Pop is horrible. Uh, you have the likes of TA who got like minor buffs as well. Um, hmm, but I don't like it against this lineup. Uh, but I, yeah, I think I think overall I think Puck is really good. Depending on whether it's the Yoga or the Tusk mid, either way I think Puck wins that lane. Um, the Void Spirit if they want to go that way, but uh, Void Spirit uh, 
actually not too bad, you know. What else do they have? Like, fuck Void Spirit. Ember might be an option, you know, he was buffed, but they go with the Quop. I really don't like it. But they do go with the Quop. Um, I had a decent game in the first uh, game number one. Uh, 99X uh, had a really good game on the Queen of Pain, so uh, picking it up again. I'm Cave Johnson. Yeah, going with the comfort, so they pick up the life stealer. Hmm. Honestly, not bad. I actually like the Excel draft here. Yeah, depending on who. The only problem with the Excel draft is the mid, right? Dawn. Uh, so it's going to be a Tusk mid. Uh, the potion five ogre. Uh, Blade is going to be potion four. And it's going to be a Tusk mid for the side of Excel. Deon, Deon is going to be playing mid on the Tusk against the Queen of Pain. Which is actually quite good for the Queen of Pain. That's the thing, right? Like, overall, even though Queen of Pain's game is not that great, but his laning stage is going to be amazing against this Tusk. We're 10 um, seconds out. Plenty of time to tell an announcement interesting. Uh, the decision from Excel to go Five Tusk seconds. mid. It's interesting, to say the least. Um, let's see how it works out. I mean, obviously you can like one shot supports with like the carry build. The Aghanim is really strong with the kickback. Uh, there's a lot of, uh, you know, weird shenanigans that you can do with the task with like blink dagger, snowball and the kick and all. So, it can work out. Like, it's not that it can't. But uh, I'm definitely not a huge fan of it, to say the least. But yeah, that's your draft. My only problem for Excel is their mid lane. Um, but other than that, I feel like they have a decent draft here. All right, we are into the game. It's going to be a Tusk mid and axe off lane with Blaze as well, uh, supporting him in that lane. I think it should be, or is it going to be? Oh, they're oh they're running the ogre top. I think, or oh, I don't know. We'll have to wait and see. Too early to call it. Uh, Where's the smoke this time around? No smoke. And we have a pause. So with that, we do have the game resuming back up. Uh, let's have a look. So. Like I said, it's going to be a Tusk mid. Um, interesting. They do smoke. So smoke out is it available. They will utilize it. They are going to be running it down to the top side of the map. Uh, what what are they going to be doing? Do they have a smoke? They are going to be dividing things up. No smoke of Desit available. They are going to be dividing the runes between each other by the looks of it. Alright gang, 30 seconds. Meanwhile, they will find the Lich who is going to be walking in. The ice shot is going to be good enough and that's going to be another first blood. This time around, Rabbit Thief on the carry life still will pick it up. Uh, good take off gold. I'm not sure what the Lich was doing there alone, to be honest. Weird. Today in this fantasy forest land, history will be made, blood will be spilled, ancients will be defended by you. The runes will be traded between the two teams. Let's have a look at this laning, right? So we have Dawnbreaker, Venge, uh, yeah, Dawnbreaker, Venge against Lifestealer, Grimstroke. I think the Grimstroke gets gone on, I feel like that's a kill. Uh, the Bay of Terror, the Stun, uh, what do you call it, the Starbreaker? Yeah, Starbreaker on top of it, I feel like it's too cheesy. And they don't have the same kill potential, I feel like, on uh, onto the Dawnbreaker and the Venge, though. A bit of last hits being missed already, need to be careful. The range creep uh, going to get denied, uh, this is a horrible start, and in time the Grimstroke steals a creep as well. Not going to be too happy with that. Missing out again on more last hit. So Lifestealer missing out on almost an entire wave. Interesting Inkswell. Going to get denied. Uh. 
They're missing out on creeps. They use the magic missile to grab that lifesteal yet to get a last hit. Not great. Two creep waves, only one creep. Going to be missing out on this range creep as well. In the meantime, top lane, they will find the kill onto the ogre, interestingly enough. Level 2 up for Pate. And again, this is the problem of not having battle hunger, man. Shouldn't be able to get out. Where is your battle hunger? See, he maxes it out, but he gets the level 1 at the wrong time. Now he's going to die for this. Not sure what he was doing there. The oh, call is going to be there. Is it going to be good enough though? Yes, it is. But that's a style wasted. And now the Lich is going to die here in return. So let's call it a debate. Sun is going to be there. No, the axe can't chase into that. There's a spectre coming off cooldown in like three seconds as well. Let's be careful. He's going to eat a couple of tangos uh, to try and, you know, region back up. In the meantime, we have the Lich teeping back top. Maybe backing off for the time being mid lane. In the meantime, uh, fairing task at least, uh, getting quite a few denies over uh, the Queen of Pain, sitting at like 6 denies, 7 last hits over the 5 creeps that uh, the Queen of Pain has been able to take. Playing it very aggressive. I like the way that the task is playing this lane. No, I might be wrong. Uh, oh, rune's been stolen by the Venge as well as the Queen of Pain. So, water rune din uh, being denied to the task. Won't get that free refill. Grimstroke needs to be a little bit careful, he's trying to stop the pull here. Uh, you cannot stop the pull like that, you need to hit the enemy creeps for that. And now he's going to get uh, forced off of the location. And they will get the full creep pull and the lifestyle is going to be very, very sad. That is going to be there. Casting under the tower. Uh, gets the range creep as well. Pain of Pain forced to blink out. Getting Is caught inside the shards. Interesting sentries. Double sentry. Right on top of each other. Sadly enough, the Grimstroke is not going to get any gold for this. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, why won't get one free in terms of sentries? A bit of harass being done. Uh, Axe uh, off to a good start yet again. Dawnbreaker is definitely having a better time on that bottom lane. Lifestyle has been missing out on a bit too much in terms of last hit. So, yet again, that range creep uh, he's missing out on. Why is his damage so low? Not too sure. Ah, Grimstroke missing out on his stroke of fate there. I've been able to get some chip damage done. Tusk is up to level 5 and now the pings are onto the bottom lane. They want to try and go on this bottom lane. Uh, Grim falling down low. They will hit the Bay of Terror but not enough damage on that. And Axe is going to get run down by the Lich for the time being who has managed to get a good pull off. Spectre is not having the best of times either in terms of the last hits. And the Ogre is just doing a really good job of, you know, zoning people out. He did this the last game as well on the train character. Oh, lovely, lovely dart there. Now, something might be in a bit of trouble. They do pop a mango there. They have the frost shield if they want to use it. But this axe is not the easiest of targets to go on. Range creep being missed by the axe there. Unfortunate. But at least they didn't get the full creep deny. And now they want to try and chase the call. It's going to be there. Is it going to be good enough? It's going to be the question. The frost shield is going to get popped. Alimaka uh, just, uh, you know, uh, beefing up, frontlining for the team. Axe just needs to uh, sit back and technically farm at this point. Range grip, range grip, range grip, range grip. Got it. Pask is completely dominating this lane. Look at the last hit difference, it's crazy. He has his level 6 as well. But he can't roll on unless like it's point back in the meantime vengeful spirit might be in a little bit of trouble the blood grin going to get used as well why is your rage man doesn't use it but in the meantime the stun is going to be there on to blaze so blaze so trying to run away he's going to be able to weave his way through the trees as the lifestyle is going to be slowing him down with that gold frenzy on him so off to a good start uh, early mac here uh sorry i mean uh extel here i'm using the player name as the team name in the meantime Tusk 
Uh, my main little trouble here, Blazer's cell as well. The stun flies out onto the Tusk. The better kill to have the Blood Grand is going to be there. And that is going to be bye bye, Tusk. And 99X is going to be the one to pick it up as well. That's going to be uh, good for him in terms of recovery because it's half the last hit behind. That's going to help him in the lane. This Dawnbreaker, on the other hand, has been having a really good time on the bottom lane. Uh, so much of last hits compared to the Life Stealer, at, at least four ahead. Life Stealer has managed to catch up here. Uh, the sun is going to get dodged with that rage, which is level one. So he has maxed, uh, gone for two levels of his gold, gold frenzy, which is interesting. They want to try and turn this around. The hammer forward, the star breaker as well. But the winch was not in position for the stun. Wasn't expecting absolute zero to go in there. But the stun flies out. Now he needs to be careful. There is another hammer uh, coming through. Celestial hammer. If he gets it off, this might be a dead life stealer. He has the star breaker available as well. He might actually try and go for this. Does he know? He tries to go for it. The rage is going to get popped. Steel hammer off position, but the magic missile will put the life stealer down. And on the top lane, Thunderly is going to be in a world of hurt here as one more hit and he goes down. And that is going to be GSS grabbing two quick co kills. Middle is missing. Middle is missing. It's a call from the Tusk, who is just freely farming away, getting close to his face boots as well. Top lane now, uh, Eddie Mac in a little bit of trouble here. Uh, the urn is going to get used by the spec as well. Eddie Mac trying to run away, turn around, stun, axe, does the TP come in time? They are going to turn this around, the call is not on point. Unfortunate for the axe there. Middle is missing. Uh, Blazer has been missing quite a few of his stroke of it. I mean, time. He's running down the Tusk. Tusk is okay. He picks up another ward as well. Axe again leading the network chart, getting close to that Vanguard. He basically has it at this point. I just need to pick up that vitality booster, which is going to do. Uh, maybe focus on getting the creep before. I am maybe. not a betting man, unless it's basketball. Is it there on time? Football, no creep. Rugby, Oof. Got it. Curling. Nice. If I was, Bottom lane, a lot of damage been down to absolute zero, as well as the vengeful spread to absolute zero, popping that salve. And now the task going to be making that first rotation, looking to pick up the bounty rune here, uh, by the looks of it. Got it. And he is going to be rotating in. I don't think he was spotted out. Wait, there was a watcher there, so I oh, know watcher is not taken, so I'm gonna call it out in the meantime. Uh, there is the Queen of Pain tipping in, jumping forward. Uh, there are TPs coming in, though, they need to be careful. Axe is gonna get uh, slowed down with the dart, though. Wench has joined the fight, they need to be careful. Tusk is still hanging around the area. Grimstroke joining the fight as well. The TPs are coming in, we might have a full. 4v4 brawl here, make that 5v4 as the spec haunts in, the celestial hammer comes through as well, they're going to pop absolutely everything on them and they will find two quick kills. Uh, this is a problem right, like you try to go for an engagement, you need to get out if you don't get it. They look for it, they didn't find it, they need to back the hell up because there is going to be a lot of TPs coming in. But still, top last hits uh, are they going to be uh, uh, AMAC here, even the net worth wise. I mean, it's fine. The axe has dropped in terms of net worth, uh, even though he did have quite a bit of last hits. Uh, uh, he has died uh, multiple times, uh, yeah, twice now without a kill. So, not too great. 99x uh, has managed to pick up the Falcon Blade uh, on the. What is this? Uh, he has the shield rune right now, okay. I wonder why is this not being shown properly, but yeah, he has a shield rune. That's why the extra barrier on top of his HP bar. But I'm worth so much more. Deny not working out. What's the base damage? Okay. That's a lot of base damage. 82 base damage. Some around those rock of eight hits. Up an arcane boot, picking up the wand as well. Life stealer, what are you looking to go for? He's looking to pick up that armlet. Uh, 
interesting components being picked up uh, to start things off but you always would prefer to have the helm of iron will over everything else Top lane, I uh, need to be careful that the axe is going down, stroke of fate not good enough and the spec is going to be TPing out, the swap is going to be there onto Elimac, the sun is going to fly out as well, the spec is going to be haunting back in and that's going to be Zakarum TPing back to base, haunting back in and getting a kill, this is the power of the new Spectre and they will end up losing 2 on the top lane yet again, unfortunate. I still does have the armlet picked up by looking to pick up the desolator. Uh, I don't say I agree with the pickup too much. Um, but I mean, but yeah. Axe gets a decent timing on his blink dagger, maybe. He has thrown picked up, so they might look to go on this life stealer, but uh, not the easiest here to bring down with uh, rage as well as infest. Turning around. They do use a smoke of desert, so now they are trying to. Oh, Haste. top lane is the action here. They are going to go to work. The spec so low on HP. Is he going to go down? Is going to be the question. Yes, he does end up falling. Tusk weaving around the trees not going to be good enough. They will lose the tusk. So one for one trade so far, and now the axe will end up going down as well, and they will lose the ogre. So three heroes dying for this kill on the spectre, and that's a triple kill for 99x. Grimstroke is going to be hightailing himself out of there, but Venge is going to be on a smoke of deceit. Does he have the swap range though? But the Queen of Pain is going to be there as well, weaving around the trees, blinks forward, and that's an ultra kill for 99x. Oh, what's having a not so good of a time mid lane in terms of last hit, but he's back in the game. He's probably highest net worth after that. Yes, he is. Life still is a close second with the axe now trailing a little bit, and even the Tusk now falling behind. So, Urban picked up, Blade Mail picked up, but uh, Spec is uh, doing okay for himself. This lifestealer has a lot of weight to be carrying, and the axe also. To be fair, there needs to be doing a lot of work, so he has to pick up the dagger. There is going to be a couple of stacks being done for him. Elimac ha has been at work in terms of uh, stacking for the axe, who is going to need it if he wants to, you know, get that uh, early uh, blink dagger that he's looking for. That's a, a triple stack that you're looking at uh, if the axe is interested in taking it. The wisdom rune is available. He's taking another stack here, so he should be getting a decent timing on his blink dagger if he does not die anytime soon. Bottom lane, we might have a little bit of action here. Life stealer farming away needs to be careful. Avenge uh, is going to be dewarding here. Life stealer is just going to be high shelling himself out of there. The global presence is what is scary, right? Because now they are uh, going to be working with the Dawnbreaker on this bottom uh, tower. And they can't really fight into this. You are working against the Chalt, the Dawnbreaker Alt, the Spec Alt, the Sonic Wave. They don't know. It's a bit rough in terms of the team fight unless Axe uh, is the one to start. But yeah, he's going to be doing this triple stack. Uh, he's trying to, okay, maybe maybe a quad stack here as he is uh, trying to... Uh, uh, does he get the stack off here? Yes, he does. He doesn't get a quad stack in the meantime. Mid lane, Queen of Pain, in a little bit of trouble here. Manages to get the blink out. There's a ward watching this though. They need to be careful. They are going to smoke immediately behind him. They contest this stack. Axe is going to be so so sad. He's going to be able to finish it in time. He will finish it, but if he dies here, it's going to be haunting in the Dawnbreak ultimate as well. Sonic way. Uh, ay, 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 ay. He just finished the stack, and now the task is going to get caught as well. That ward wasn't dewarded, and they are going to be in a world of hurt here. They will jump in, but the Lich ultimate to fly through. Triple kill for 99x. Yet again, he is on a godlike streak. Again, having a really good game on this Queen of Pain. They're losing map control fast on the side of Excel here. GSS are putting that pressure. 
very early on using that global uh, global to the best of their ability here with the you know solar guardian as well as uh, the uh, astro step astro step no sorry shadow step Oh no, they smoked on top of a ward. They didn't catch it out. They shouldn't have smoked because they didn't deward it. No, no, my boy. Oh, they are going to try and wrap around. Access the blink dagger already. He's going to be jumping in. Gets the call off. The silence is going to be there as well. Punch up in the air and down she drops. And that's the queen of pain. Dead. And that's a beyond godlike streak being divided between four heroes there. And they will work on this tier 3 tower for it. Benji is keeping in to try and uh, hold them off. But uh, uh, need to be careful. They do have the Solar Guardian available as well. There's another TP coming in. That's going to be the Dawnbreaker coming in. Uh, the good call. And now, good God, the damage coming in. They will find another kill. The Lich Ultimate flying through. Is it going to be good enough? Uh, the pull, the things together is going to be there as well. Sandro needs, uh, Sand needs to be careful. He's going to be trying to run away. Solar Guardian is going to be used. It's not going to be on point as a lovely ice shot box things off. And they will back off. They at least defend the tower. They only lost the bench for it. So they're going to be quite happy. But that's a lot of ultimates uh, uh, utilized for that fight. They have the Sonic Wave to work with. Uh, they don't have any more Shadow Steps available. So they can actually turn around. If they are smart about this, they can actually still go for this Tier 3 Tower Mid. I mean, Tier 1 Tower Mid. There's no ultimates on the side, no Lich ultimate, no swap, I mean, uh, no Solar Guardian available uh, and no Shadow Step for some time at least, but it's going to be off cooldown in a couple of seconds. So they need to do this fast, absolutely fast. Oh, I thought Axe might have actually jumped in to get the call off there. So they do end up defending the tier 3 tower mid. Spectre uh, edging close to that uh, all important radiance timing now. Lysa is still sitting at top of the net worth. He hasn't been involved in any of this fight, so hasn't got any desolate charges. Now looking to pick up a uh, basher here, smoked up. But they want to uh, start a fight, but again, they're on top of this ward. They just ran out. It's so unfortunate. The dire team is completely aware of this and they go into the jungle, not going to find anyone because everyone just backed off onto the other side. At least get some warding done. Ogre revealed himself to the tower. Pain without consequence. Yikesies. If you're in the vicinity of Dyer's top tower, I put on a hard hat. That they want to try and take this mid tower as fast as possible. That ah uh, yeah yeah the task has also gone for desolator. This is not Dyer's ideal. They're trying to work for this. Uh, it's going down fast. They will find it. At least. There is an illusion rune. The task will be picking this up. And they find someone here. Can they find the dawnbreaker? Will be a good kill to have. He's looking to pick up a desolator as well. So there is so many desos now. Dawnbreaker gets spotted out. Uh, do they have the jump though? No, he's too fast for it. He has face put Echo Saber. He's gonna be running away. Now they want to do a counter smoke here. Does anyone have it? When just having one delivered to him right now, I think yes he is. Is that the four staff completed? No, it's not. So smoking behind the lifestyle is gonna be the rest of the Radiant squad from uh, Excel here. This is going to be a brawl here on this bottom lane. This is going to be an interesting one. Sacred Relic picked up. We're looking to pick up the uh, Talisman of Evasion. 
which is around 42 gold away for that Radiance. They are going to be going in. They see the Dawnbreaker. Are they going to be able to get the jump off is going to be the question. They will actually find this. The Axe will, will get the call off. The Lich with the lovely ultimate onto to a couple of heroes here. They are going to ball up for the time being. The swap is going to be the Dawnbreaker still surviving. Uh, Solar Guardian going to be used, not going to be good enough, that's a three-man Sonic Wave being utilized. They will end up losing the two supports and the life still now going to be in a world of hurt. He gets instigated up and he will die out and the Axe is going to be trying to TP out but the stun is going to be there. They end up losing four. They took a little bit too much time to kill the Dawnbreaker and they will pay for it with uh, two of their cores and two of their supports leaving only the Tusk surviving who managed to get out with one Desolated Charge and this is the thing. Like, why double this oh man? Why the double this -o? If you had gone for Aghanims, right? You kick the Dawnbreaker in here. Like, somewhere here. You'll get kicked somewhere here or something, right? Uh, or at least here. You you take a safer fight. You're not fighting behind a tier 1 tower. Where there can be multiple heroes steeping into two different towers. Like, it's way too risky. Like, mm, I don't like the double this honestly. Looks like Radiant's top tower is getting torn down. Not a fan, not a fan at all. And Spec now with that has the Radiance Apples as well. He's almost up to Yasha. We'll probably be able to pick up the Manta quite soon. And what do we have? What do we have? What do we have? Blade Mill almost done for the X. like the dyer figured out where radiance top tower is Axe needs to be careful, they are coming in for a swap here, the swap is going to be there, it's time to follow up as well, the Axe is going to be in a world of hurt, but in the meantime the spec ultimate is comes through as well, the Axe will end up falling, they will get the kill onto the Queen of Pain at least, the Infest is going to save Tusk as well as the life still for the time being, the stun is going to be there, but the Tusk ends up dying, life still left alone, no rage available, trying to run away, is he going to be able to get out is going to be the question, Elimac will pay for it live, again a 1 for 4 trade and they are going to be smoking, trying to close the gap, he's going to rage and face put himself out of there. Again, a 1 for 4 trade. This is not enjoyable for uh, Excel here. They are losing out on too many in these engagements. And Spec is getting fatter and fatter and fatter by the second. He's going to be a fat, fat boy. Unless it's basketball. Football, horse racing, rugby, cricket, or tournament. But if I was, I'd bet on Radiant's top tower coming down. If you're a fan of Radiant's top tower, I'd shut my eyes right now. I still now needs to be careful. He's getting hunted down by the rest of the squad of a uh, GSS. Uh, the only person who is not there is actually the Queen of Pain because Dawnbreaker can always come in with the Solar Guardian, the God from Heaven, raining down destruction upon them at any given time. Manta style around 1,500 gold away for the Spectre. It's so expensive now that Ultimate Dawn, 2,800. It's crazy. Don't break in the meantime, Invis. They see him, they catch him, and they will punch him up in the air, but uh, they did have the Celestial Hammer to get out. We are going to see an immediate uh, smoke of deceit being used, utilized here, looking for a swap. The Venge is going to be walking forward. Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. Okay, fine, you can look. It's kind of funny. Smoking into the jungle, not going to be finding anything. Absolute Zero will break his smoke. Meantime, Shard is going to get picked up on the, uh, what do you call the Grimstroke, uh, which is quite nice. Oh yeah, definitely like it. Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting obliterated. Tusk needs to be careful. Oh no, the call missed completely because of the Radiance and now this is going to be a bit of a tough fight. They should get out. The Blade Mail gets popped and they want to try and fight. This is a Solar Guardian coming through. Blaze, they're still in a whole lot of trouble. We'll get the 
the bind out, but how much is it going to do is going to be the question. The punch into Abdul Dizra, but he's going to be turning around uh, with the hammer and the sonic wave to clean things up. They only get the wench and end up losing two for it. Uh, the life stealer manages to find one more onto Dawnbreaker. The call is going to be there. Is it going to be good enough though? There's so much of damage. Spectre is so tanky and good god. Ay, 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 the scream of pain, killing of three heroes instantly, and that's a full team wipe on the side of Excel as GSS looks to go high ground. This is why this hero is banned. This hero is so freaking tanky. And then, without the shard, even. If you're in the vicinity of Dyer's top tower, I put on a hard hat. That baby is coming down. Dyer's top tower just went right belly up. Don't look now, but Radiant's bottom tower is getting a Radiant's sturdy bottom tower was look, built kind to withstand. Uh, never mind, it's gone. They will claim tier 3 and will back off, at least for the time being. for the dead. Getting close to Skadi, good god, this spec is gonna be unkillable, they have no break. Uh, See, instead of this desolate, I would have even preferred a silver edge on this Neex. A lifestealer. Neex is. Neex, Neex assassin? No. Nyx. Nyx? Was it called? Dora one? Worthy tweet. Things are looking dire for Dyer's bottom tower. Things are looking dire for Dyer's bottom tower, and they will end up falling. Dyer's bottom tower is gone to be with the big brick in the sky. Radiant's middle tower is hanging on by a brick. This is a really tough, I mean, it's a 17,000, sorry, a 12,000 net worth lead, and look at the net worth difference between Spec and Lifestealer, right? The Spec is farming so fast with Radiance now, uh, it's just um, going to be a tough one for the Lifestealer to keep up. But look at how scared they are playing right there. You have five heroes uh, basically pumped up together. They do use the smoke of deceit. So no life still in that smoke of deceit though. And it was on top of a ward again. It's yet again on top of a I enemy ward. A man, unless it's basketball, football, horse racing, rugby, and the spectre is like, yeah boy, I am out. Top tower down. And now it's a bit obvious as well because no one defending that top tower. If you're a fan of Radiant's top tower, I'd shut my eyes right now. Again? Dyer is kicking sweet hell out of Radiant's bottom tower. Yeah, I mean, Excel just really things really not working out for them. I mean, three smokes were utilized under a board, and uh, they are paying the price for it. You know what, the only way, Dark Portrait, which exactly is Grimstroke going for, if he can get a Dark Portrait of the Spectre, would be insane. Double Dark po Portrait, like Spectre and Dawnbreaker, would be like crazy, but yeah. Finally end up uh, devoting it, I think, yeah. And the big boy with the Santa Claus hat is gonna go down. He actually does not have the Santa Claus hat. But yeah, the big boy Roshan is gonna get get gone on by this uh, dire team. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be a pretty easy one. They have the damage. And the Spectre joining as well now. This uh, Roshan is gonna melt. Almost as his Cardi now, around 1200 gold away from it. And he picks up Aegis as well. Things are looking dire for Radiant.
They pick up an Arcan drone that is going to be on the tusk. Lotus Orb is going to be the item of choice for the Vengeful Spirit, I think rightly so. Have a lot of single target spells. Oh, they do jump in. The Queen of Pain blinked in, though he needs to be careful. But the Solar Guardian comes through. The Lich Ultimate as well. The Tusk will go down. Call misses yet again because of the Radiance. And Life Sealer trying to fight up against. Uh, they need to be careful. The Ogre Seal is going to be utilized as well. The Swap is going to be there, but it's not going to be good enough. Can he bash him down to death? Is going to be the question. He's not. And now the buyback will come down on the Vengeful Spirit. In the meantime, they clean up on the other side. And this might be all over, ladies and gentlemen. They're chasing after the Rabbit Thief, uh, who managed to get one, but uh, the immediate buyback from the Vengeful Spirit as well. They lose four, and they will lose this tier two tower mid, and even maybe the tier three tower. It's going to be a set of racks. Oh, Life Stealer comes in from the side. The open wounds is going to be there, but he's not going to be able to find anyone. The swap is going to be there to delay things as well. The call on to the Vengeful Spirit only. Not ideal. And now the Dark Portrait is not. Oh, sorry, the. Oh, good God. The Illusions killed off. Uh, and in the meantime, they will find the Queen of Pain. Axe is going to be in a little bit of trouble here. Life Stealer still fighting strong though, up against the Spectre. Spectre pops the Blade Mail. Is it going to be enough damage though? There is no break. Everyone's taking so much of damage. Touch Snowball is in. Will find the Lich kill here. Gets pulled in. Uh, ends up dying for it. And that was just ages on the Spectre. The Dawnbreaker now in trouble. One more hit away. And they will find that kill with the stun coming out from Elimac here. Dawnbreaker buys back into the fight and comes in with the Solar Guardian raining chaos into this fight. And he manages to get the Infest out. And he's now trying to hightail himself out of here. And that was a 5-4 five, four, five, four, four trade because of the ages. And there was a buyback forced as well. Jeevan ready is the call. Axe was lagging a bit. Uh, we are back into the game here. Uh, that's going to be another set of right. There is a buyback though. Life still coming in with a creep here. You should be careful, the creep will end up dying, so now trying to fight up against the light. The Spectre, Spectre gets uh, slowed up by that open wound, they're trying to chase after him, is it going to be good enough, is going to be the question, bashed up, the stun is going to be there as well, there is no Solar Guardian to save him this time around, and Spec will end up dying finally, good god that man. And it was the Alimac who uh, picks up the kill, unfortunately it was not uh, towards the Lifestealer, but he picks up a healthy chunk of 1000 gold here. Things settled down here. GSS now a little bit worried. Maybe they lost a bit of a fight there. The network still stands at uh, 12,000, but the win probability 92% towards his dire side. It was almost at 100, I guess, 98% uh, before that, uh, those buybacks and kills, and now it has dropped to 92. Uh, but yeah. Got it. It was a good fight for the Life Stealer, finding a lot of Desolator charges. Now trying to go in for a Nali. Nali Nali. And they are going to be working on this uh, Tommy before people get together and will bring it down very, very fast. And that's going to be a very good shard for the Lich. So that is going to be the Ice Fire Spire Spire. Been picked up by the Lich with that Aghanim shard. Interestingly enough, uh, I don't know why the Dawnbreaker hasn't got the shard. It's quite nice. KB. The Life Sailor uh, is going to be farming the lane with everyone else uh, seated behind him on smoke. I'm going for an MKB, so the Radiants are forcing him to go MKB instead of uh, okay, another smoke utilized. Dawnbreaker needs to be careful, they see, do see him. 
Oh, they saw the tusk for a moment. Unfortunate. There is another smoke cup tank coming from behind. How is the fight going to break out? Is going to be the question. Tusk is going to be in a world of hurt if he's not careful. He's spotted out. Needs to be careful. The call is going to be there onto the Lich. Lich is going to be the only one dying. The Dawnbreaker comes in with the ultimate. Tusk gets absolutely deleted. And now. That's going to be the Dark Portrait utilized. Where is the that's a Dawnbreaker Dark Portrait? That's not the one that you want. You want the spec, and they will end up losing three. The life still has gone down as well. They have buyback on two here, and the Ogre does not have buyback down for 70 seconds without buyback. And a Lich was the only buyback they costed. And in the meantime, tier four towers are getting get gone on by the Dire Side creeps here. Axe is going to try and TP back and defend. He really needs a BKB here. Got the double dark portrait, but uh, I mean, oh, Spec comes in onto the axe, uh, gets uh, silenced up as well. Uh, he's going to get uh, run down by the Spec. So much of damage. Now the buyback from the Lifestealer. Call misses from somebody and uh, forcing the buyback on the Lifestealer. Very good ultimate. A very good uh, shadow step uh, that was used because he still does not have the agonims for the horn. And in the meantime, bottom uh, racks are going to get uh, focused on here. They can fight this because the ultimates are not available absolute zero will use the self steel hammer to get out and now forcing the tusker in he does that by uh, bkb i don't know why he did not pop it he will die for it not sure what that was all about and now the buyback comes through but it might be a little bit too late here axe will end up dying he has the buyback as well another buyback comes to life still trying to fight up against the specter will not be able to as he gets into a crib where is he gets into Oh yeah, he gets into like it. They will end up getting the Lich. With the illusion, that of the Spectre, Dark Portrait, uh, getting the kill onto the Lich. Buybacks uh, like used, but to no avail as they down. end up losing the racks. And now, the Radiant's win percentage is back to 98%. Wisdom rune available. They really need to go to work on these uh, Tommies as well. Life's a little bit Yeah, he's strong now. He's a strong boy. Maybe not. Maybe yes. Definitely yes. Took some time, and that's going to be the axe getting. What's the shard? Okay, it's nice. It's nice. Strange enough, no culling charges for the axe. He had such a good game number two, and this time around he has nothing for it. Not entirely sure why GSS has slowed things down. I, I feel like they should be ending this. Radiant scanning around for enemies. With their odd looking, bulging eyes. I'm sorry, it's just creepy. Maybe going in for Roshan, uh, who is a good one minute away. I like the fact that now this is here. Previously, casters had to you know, guess. Uh, how many, uh, you know, the bars, like, how much it was exactly. Yeah. Little over 30 seconds left for Roshan to spawn. And with that, I think this game is all but over for Excel unless they can pull off something absolutely insane. No BKB still for the Axe. Uh, is he getting it delivered now? Oh, it's not. It's going to be the neutrals. That's the tier 3. What's your tier 4? Uh, no, uh, tricks the cloak, okay. Not too bad, he can now walk in.
Don't break also now does so much of damage. Look at that good god, the damage. The damage is insane from the Dawnbreaker as well. Six charges on the Desolator. Ay, 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 man. I feel like this itself costed them the game. Sadly. But, uh, yeah, I mean, what to do, you know? Decisions at the time. Things happen. But nevertheless, uh, uh, it has been a good fight. But I, I don't see GSS losing this game at this point. Unless, you know, they do some fountain dive shenanigans where the Tusk manages to kick them in. But he's a good 1,500 gold away from his uh, Aghanim Scepter, whereas the Dire Side GSS is going to work on this Roshi Roshi. He's going to go down quite fast. They pick up the Aegis on the Queen of Pain because the Spectre does not die. He has Bloodthorn, Skadi, Radiance, Blade Mill. So much of armor, so much of damage that he's working with. This is without shard. I don't know why he has not picked up the shard yet. Imagine him with shard, right? They don't do anything to him. He's untouchable. This has to be such a big play. Like the Aghanim Scepter play has to be absolutely picture perfect. See whether he can pull it off. I still need to be careful. He gets swapped in, pops the rage, he's trying to run away here. Uh, gets inside a creep as well, but the creep is slowed down. He comes out and now he's going to get silenced up. He's trying to fight up against everyone here. They will find the Dawnbreaker. That's a good kill, but he has buyback here. Is he going to utilize this? this is going to be the question. Spec is getting gone, but the Solar Guardian comes through. He's going to be healing the Spec up and they will end up losing the Axe. That's Axe dead with a buyback and they will end up losing the Ogre as well. Pops the Glimmer Cape, so him for the time being. Queen of Pain jumps in. Can they fight it? It's going to be the question. Ogre manages to get out, which is... Uh, Interesting to say the least, and they still have the ages up. That was such a good buyback from the Dawnbreaker because I think the spec might die there without it. They jump back in again, Queen of Pen playing it aggressive. He does have the ages of Immortality. Might get bashed up here. Yes, he does. That's the ages down. But now they won't try and fight this. That's going to be the task that Life still fighting up against the Lich Ultimate, which is going to be by bouncing with the Spire, and they will lose everyone. And this might just be all over. Life still dead without buyback. Five heroes dead on the side of Excel, Excel, and that is going to be GSS claiming the title all over again for Dota 2. GG has been called and there you have it ladies and gentlemen that is your winners for Dota 2 in the Mercantile Esports Championship 2023 what a game what a tournament what a best of three series it was absolutely insanity uh, it went the distance uh, we had some good fights good engagements and overall, a really good grand finals between these two teams. But it was GSS reigning supreme in 2-1 fashion. It was definitely not easy for them. They had to fight for it, but they end up closing it out quite convincingly. A really good performance coming out from uh, Zacharom there on that Spectre, as well as Absolute Zero uh, on the Dawnbreaker, as well as 99X on that uh, Queen of Pain. I mean, overall standard performance coming out from the entire team of GSS Wings to Victory. I uh, just absolutely dominant performance uh, but with that we are going to be closing things out ladies and gentlemen uh i mean thank you so much for everyone who took part in the dota 2 title as well as the entire tournament a huge shout out to excel for the amazing grand finals uh, i think i have the third place match winners as well with me let me just uh, quickly check on who won the third place uh, match here um just double checking this one second uh, yeah, it was another spot from GSS, so GSS is claiming the gold and the silver both, which is uh, insane for them, but it's going to help them even more in their overall standing. So with that, we're going to be wrapping things up. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining me in this Dota 2 Grand Finals. A massive shout-out to the production team and a huge, huge shout-out to SLG Mobile for powering the entire team, the best broadband connection in the country. Check it out if you do not have an SLG Mobile fiber line. Uh, but with that, it's going to be me, Ter, signing out. Thank you so much. Up until next time. See you guys.
Mobitel.lk's Mercantile Esports Championship powered by SLT Mobitel. Sri Lanka's largest corporate esports battle. 250,000 rupees cash prize. Company gamers get ready to compete in 25 game titles. 